It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. The brilliant idiots podcast. Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. And uh, you do this one, Schultz. <laughs> it's on me? Yes. <laughs> I got to do this one? All right. Guys, the episode has been brought to you by, and I just need to do a little warning here. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical, not for sale to minors. Satisfying yet simple. No fuss with refilling liquid pods. Just choose from a range of flavors. Pop in a liquid pod and My Blue goes with you all day. Find My Blue in a store near you or order online, myblue.com. Website restricted to 21. It's, mm, kind, it's kind of crazy to tell people that this product includes nicotine. And warn people. Yes. I'm smoking it because it's got nicotine yeah, in it. That's, why that's we're what I'm it. here for. <laughs> if it didn't have no nicotine in it, I wouldn't be fucking smoking. I would just have an oral fixation. Real so therefore, talk. I would just suck a dick. If I wanted Yo, something in my mouth just to be there. That's the new vape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now turn Yo, your... can white people even say nicotine? Why? No, it's not even close. Listen, it's not close? No. Say it again. Nicotine. Now you're saying Nicaragua. Nicaragua. <laughs> That's not even a place. 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 You never been to Nicaragua? Oh, you don't go to the Bronx too often, do you? <laughs> Listen, turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace. Oh, shit. Also one of today's sponsors. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. With beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. And if you do get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, let's start the show. I um, I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Oh, shit. Never been to Santa Fe before. Wait, um, never? Never. You never just went down there for a nice weekend? Never. With the boys? Nah. You focus Santa Fe? You been to Santa Fe before? Nah, I've never been to Santa Fe. Oh, yeah. No, nah, maybe I did a college in Santa Fe, but anyway. I went to Santa Fe because uh, my man Elvis Duran, my radio godfather, he got married this weekend. Ooh. Got married to my man Alex, uh, Alex Carr. I believe Alex's last name is Carr. Okay. But I went to this wedding and it made me say to myself, first I thought, man, I need more gay friends. Yes. Because gay people really know how to party. But oh. then I had to think about it. I had to step back. Oh. Because we talk about identity a lot, and we think that somebody's identity makes them the person that they are or makes their level of, you know, or their ability to have fun, whatever it is, has mm -hmm. nothing to do with being gay. It's the fact that Elvis Duran is rich. Yes. Okay. It is the fact that Elvis Duran was doing things. Elvis Duran gave away a car. At his wedding. <laughs> he gave away a car to whom? <laughs> First, he told everybody to look under their seats. So everybody reached their hand under their seats. He's like, no, nah, I just want to see everybody look like they was digging in their ass. Right? It'd <laughs> so, be funny if he had dicks just standing up. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest with you, I don't even remember how he gave away yeah. the car. Because at this point in the night, I was drunk. Yeah. I just know he gave away a car right. to one of the lucky people that he invited to his wedding. That's the level of... That's the level of bawling and stunting that Elvis Duran was doing at yeah. his wedding. Is the car in Santa Fe? Because all I'm thinking about is logistics. How do I get the car he's back gonna, home? He That's said all. he's going to get it shipped back to wherever you are. He said all of that on stage. When the wedding was over, yeah. it's like a mariachi band comes through, plays in the wedding. How do they feel about playing at the gay, gay wedding? I have no idea. I mean, Santa Fe is all is damn near majority brown anyway. Yeah, so this that, is yeah. very progressive mariachi band. Yes, but that was the illest thing about it, right? Forget all of this stunting and stuff. Yeah. You know, when and I read Elvis Duran's book. It's not out yet. It comes out uh, October 1st, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's called uh, Where Do I Begin? And he talks about in the book how, you know, finding love, mm. you know, which is one thing that anybody can do, right? You find love. I think it's but, tough, but yes. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it is. It and is. But he, he talks about nurturing it. No, he talks about not knowing, not, not realizing like f falling in love, but realizing it can only go to a certain extent because at the time you couldn't get married in America. Right, right, right. You know what right, I'm right, saying? Right, 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 right. So think about that. Like think about how out of the realm of possibility that is if you're a gay person and you find love and you couldn't even get married yes. at a certain point. So think about how fulfilling it must feel yeah. to finally be able to do that. And I just was thinking about that, like, you know, we all live in our own privilege. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you know, whether you know whether you're straight, whether you're white, whether you're a male, like you we all have our various privileges. And you don't realize how much of a privilege it is yes. to be able to get married. 
and he was finally able to do that this weekend. Right. And I just thought that was, I just kept thinking about that. Like, damn, we we really all do live in our own privileges and we take other people's struggles for granted. The right. things that we don't even give a fuck about. Like, we have the right to get married and, we, and we've had it for so long and oh, didn't yeah. want to. <laughs> we get, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we avoid it with our whole lives. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, some yeah. people, that's all they want to do. Yeah, we want, you know, the forbidden fruit, right? You want what you can't have. In yeah. A lot of this and you, uh, you know, idolize But you should be you able to have it. Yes, one hundred percent. You should be able to have it. It's like a, the right to get married. Like if you want to be, listen, everybody has the right to be miserable. That's the right? thing. Everybody has the right to be happy. So here's it all the depends question. how you look at your marriage. Is it true you guys are married? Um, is it true that once you get married, you stop having sex? Hell no. Really? Hell so that's no. a gross stereotype. I, I don't can't speak for everybody else. Now I don't look like Chris. I'm still attractive, so my wife still wants to have sex with me. Chris, <laughs> but Chris has <laughs> always looked like Chris, so it's not like he got married and then turned into true. Chris. Do you know what I'm saying? She knew what she he was marrying. She said the whole that's time. not true. <laughs> so, so do you have sex? You continue having sex through marriage or not? Yeah, I mean, I would say it slowed down. If that's that's the stereotype. Maybe this is not you, Charlemagne. Right? Maybe. I mean, it slows down, but not because it's because of uh, cosmetics and superficial. I mean, it sex with when you your got wife, kids. by the way. I'm glad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When good. you got kids and you know your, your wife is doing other things and you're doing other things, you're busy being husband and wives and fathers and mothers. Shit becomes practical. You got to hey, organize. Okay. But you got to make time for that shit. You got to take these vacations. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to right. you got to go off for the weekend with just y'all two. And and just keep that flame going. Right. You know what I mean? That's so all. this is what I never understood about like conservative uh, America and their approach to gays. Right? Talk to me. Is they were always like, you know, the gay sexual appetite is crazy. All they're doing is just you know sucking each other's dicks and fucking each other in bathrooms, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, well, Who if would... you if you have the opportunity to let them get married and stop all that, why not just give it to them? Let's be clear. Yeah. All men love getting their dick sucked in bathrooms. Men are going to avoid if you. It no, doesn't no, no, matter no. what I your understand. I understand is. what I'm saying. It's yeah. it's it's the male sex drive doubled, right? That's why that's why you would assume that there's so much going on, right? But my point is, if we know a way to stop sex or slow it down, and it's marriage, just give gay people to marriage, conservatives. I get what you're saying, but I just think it seems like an easy fix. I just think it's about love. I think marriage is the the the, the symbol. Of love. Like, it's really making a commitment Why? to somebody. It's not. That's bullshit. The idea Shit. that it's a symbol for love is nonsense. You think Shit. you love someone more once you marry them? It That's is the point. It is letting the government know that you're married so that you can get a tax break. You That's know the only you, thing it is. You know how much you have to love somebody to, to, to say, hey, man, you can get half? <laughs> if, <laughs> if shit, if shit don't I don't say right. giving up half. There's a prenup. I don't know. What are you doing? But yes, I'm just you saying, do. But I'm just saying most people in general. I don't have a fucking prenup. Huh? I don't have a prenup. My wife can get whatever she wants if shit don't work out with us. You don't have a prenup. Nah, for what? We oh, that's why you don't years. cheat. You should have told everybody that before you put out that song. Black man, don't cheat mm. if they got the prenup. That should have been the little byline. I don't bylaw. cheat because I don't want to cheat. You don't cheat because it costs. Nah. That shit expensive now. Nah, I like... Back in the day... I mean, it costs when you talk about, you know, the heartbreak you're going to cause somebody that's loyal to you. Mm. You know what I thought about, man? Nick, dudes are more loyal to their homeboys than the woman that they go to sleep with every single night. Like, I won't, I won't cross you. I won't... Lie behind your back. I won't do you dirty, but you'll do that to your woman that you go to sleep with every night. Mm. That's the dumbest logic in the world. Yeah, but we ask for less. What do you mean? Your homeboys ask for less. Oh, you your homeboy no not going to be upset if you hang out with another homeboy. Yes, he will. <laughs> Y'all, you, yes, they fucking will. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. You got weird homeboys, man. For real? <laughs> what do you mean? Depending how this shit is, yeah. You got friends that will call you up, like Wax will call you up and be like, yo, why are we hanging out with Duval this weekend, not me? Nah. Not like that, but if it's somebody like, um, all right, say for example, it's somebody that may have spoken some shit about me. Uh, ah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck you fuck with that clown ass? Oh, but that's you know what fine. I'm saying? That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying all that to say, Find you some gay rich friends and go to their wedding. How was the How was the cake? Because there's been this whole big thing about uh, you know bakers not wanting to make cakes for gay weddings. Really? Oh yeah. But I've always wanted to try a gay wedding cake. How was it? I ate a lot of the cake. I didn't. Even, that shit was amazing. There Cause they cut go. it up in little squares. Yeah. And they just had it sitting outside. Yeah. yeah. I took a bunch of it. Only one, <laughs> the funny part is the only the irony is the only one I didn't like was the one that had the cream in the middle. You passed on like that cream. one. I, but I bit into it. I was like, I didn't like it. Uh -huh. But the cake was good. Oh, you talking about like as far as like putting the bride and bride or the groom and groom? No, on they the won't even do it at all. 
because really? yeah 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 there's a bunch of these baker christian muslim religious bakers Man, are often like i'm not doing here, it bro listen love wins at the end of the day i know that shit sound cliche to say right. to say but if you love somebody you want to spend the rest of their life with them you should have the right to do so i'm glad that they got the right to do so and yeah. that's the illest part about it when you look at that you just like yo that's just two people in love yeah like it, ain't, it don't matter about sexuality, uh, the gender. It's like that's just two people in love, and it's so clear to see. Love yes. is something that is so easily recognizable. You can just look at two people and be like, yo, they in love. You know it. It's it's yeah. there. And yeah. you can look at two people together and be like, look at them stupid motherfuckers. They're not even going to last. So you can yeah. see both energies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you look at them and be like, yo, they in love. That's all I saw. Two yeah. people in love. I think that's the trickiest thing with a relationship is like, uh, it's so easy to confuse like, like and... Uh, excitement yeah like the beginning is always exciting you meet someone new you want their you know validation in many different ways and you're like i must really like this person but you actually don't in a lot of times you just you just you're just so excited that there's this new person in your life and that there's this new kind of like challenge or goal and maybe like getting this person to like you and i think that's why relationships fizzle out at that certain point because once that excitement goes away you got to enjoy being around that person yo that's so ill because i remember the first time elvis, elvis ever told me about alex and we was getting drunk on the roof of some hotel around here and he was telling me about this young dude that he had just started dating he was like i think i like him i said we have fun together he was like you know we got drunk the other night and woke up and it was blood all over the pillow and you know what they say it's not a good night if you didn't if there's no blood on the pillow so i remember being like elvis who the fuck is day <laughs> who is the day sam, sam who, smith who is the day that says this but yeah, yeah. 10 years later they happily married you know what i'm saying so it's yeah. just like love you love you got to like love, hanging love out wins, with bro. someone man you yeah. got to enjoy you got to have fun with that person yes. man that's that's the number one thing for me is I have to enjoy being around you. Yeah. It can't be a chore. I can't be like, oh, I got to hang out with my girl. I got to want to hang out with you. Yeah. And enjoy that time. And that's tough. It's tough to find a person as an adult, as an already like made adult. I often think like the relationship you're in is actually more productive in a lot of ways, which is like you guys grew together. You've you known each together. other since you're fucking 17. Absolutely. So it's Absolutely. like you now you're 40 and you guys have become the people you are at the same time. Yes. You know, it's, but you can't forget that though. Of course Along not. the way of the journey, you have to remember that people are growing and evolving. So I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. She's not the same person she was of 10 course, years ago. Of course, but you guys you grew get to and know, evolved together though. Yeah, and you got to get to know the new you and I got to get to know the new her right. every, ever so often. But you guys are instrumental in making that new thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like you guys are finding new things that you enjoy together. You're finding new ways to communicate. You're finding all this shit, right? When you're 35, right, like before I met my girl, right, I'm 35, I got to hope that I meet someone who went through certain things in life that just so happens, good things and bad things, and just so happens creates this individual that happens to be, uh, what is it, uh, what is it, uh, not synonymous, but like- Compatible? Uh, compatible, yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens to be compatible with me and all the things I went through in my life, even though we haven't went through any of those things together. That's like needle in a haystack type shit. Word. Like, I think it's off. I think we look at relationships, especially in like New York and LA and we go like, oh, you're supposed to wait, man. Like my parents waited forever. You're supposed to wait till you're 30. You're supposed to wait till you're 40. It's like, I don't know, well, man. I waited 17 years before I got married. For marriage, I'm talking about relationship. Oh, yeah, yeah, got you, got Like you, got you had you. kids, you had invested in this person's life. But you can't, but, and that's the thing, you can't predict that though. Like you don't, you don't, like if you meet somebody right now and you want to be with them, y'all going to be together. Yeah. Like there's no, oh, we're going to wait. And make, like, no, nah. maybe that's what it is. You know, like I often find like, uh, you know, girls will complain about how hard it is to date in New York City. And it's like, it's not that like all dudes are hoes uh, or whatever, but it's like you're dating complete strangers. You, everybody you date had a completely different upbringing from different parts of the fucking globe. Yeah. And you upset that you go on three dates and you're like, damn, why don't we have something? And it's like, got, you know how unique that would be? Absolutely. You meet a stranger from another part absolutely. of the world that would just get along with you perfectly? And by the way, that person you meet got the same reservations that you got. They've probably been in relationships before and the relationships didn't work out. People probably broke their trust, abused yeah. their loyalty. So all of you, both of y'all got reservations. So Dude. that's how you got to approach it. And, and I think it's important to like have patience for reservations. Like anything I've jumped into as serious as a relationship where you're responsible for feelings, that shit is stressful. Like when you're in some shit, whether you like to believe it or not, you're responsible for that person's feelings. You uh, can make them yeah. feel horrible. But you know, dudes out here, a lot of us are just like, ah, whatever, she's tripping, this, that, that's, the other, that's, that's the whole point about being submissive. Like people, women hear that word submissive. 
And men hear that word submissive and we automatically think Negative you're just bowing down to yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah. All submission means is you're putting somebody else's needs before your own. That's what I'm uh, supposed to do with my wife and my kids. That's what she should do yes, yes, with yes. me and, and the kids. Like, put, if it's like, mutual submission, if it's mutual it's good. submission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, people yeah, act like being yeah. submissive, submissive is so wrong, and you yeah, shouldn't yeah, be submissive. Yeah. That means you're weak. No, it just simply means you're putting somebody else's somebody else's needs before your fucking own. Right. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah, they they yeah, Taylor Taylor was saying that they use the definition wrong, or they just use it only in the negative way. Yes, but like like as if being submissive is wrong. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm opening the door for you. I'm submitting myself to you. That's the fuck, the, bro. Yeah, there's a there's a fine line between like chivalry and submission in like the uh, in the negative way. Submission don't mean bondage. <laughs> it don't mean do the do what the fuck I tell you to do whatever I tell you to do it. Yeah. Bow down to your man at all times. No, it <laughs> simply means putting somebody else's needs before your own. The same men should be submissive to their wives. Wives should be submissive to their husbands. That's it. My wife is my number one priority along with my children. Yes, as long as it's a two-way street, then it's fine. If it's a one-way street, then you could look like a bitch. Then you could look like a punk. And you probably are one. But if it's two-way, you can't. Yo, if somebody's willing to do anything for you, it's very easy to do anything for them. If somebody say that again? If somebody's willing to do anything for you, it's very easy to do anything for them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you, got you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, when yeah. you know that person's you're like, yo, I need this. They're like, I got it. Don't worry about it. The second they ask for anything, it's like, don't ask me twice. Who are you telling? Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And by the way, don't even ask me. Because you know all I'm trying to do is make you happy. So if you want something, just get what you want. Because yeah. I'm easy breezy. I'm not tripping. I'm yeah. like, I'm, and by the way, you know what I want. Because we've been together so long. Yes. So let's just make it easy for the both of us to make the decision, please. Yes. I'm submissive as a motherfucker. Yes. Like, I'm, t- I'm at the point where anybody who knows me, they know to ask my wife. Hmm. Is he going to be there? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Is he going to do this? Yeah. Like, just, just call me. We'll make it happen. Like, yeah. I think and I'm cool with that. I think there are things that you have to be assertive about, though. Like I think it's a, it, I think it's a balance, right? I think, like... Is that yin and yang shit? It's like, yeah, I think your girl needs to know that you're submissive in certain areas, but she needs to know you're assertive. You put your anything foot life down or death I things. handle, right? Anything that's serious, you know, going to the wrong place. I'll yeah. give you an example. I remember being in Grenada one year, and you know, when we go out, we get the boat. You know what I'm saying? We rent the boat. We'd be out on the boat, whatever, whatever. Yeah, a little light yacht, something like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but for, for this particular moment, we hadn't light, met the people. Light yacht. <laughs> <laughs> we hadn't met. We, I ain't gonna let y'all think I got a boat. <laughs> so I'd never been to Grenada. That was the first time I went to Grenada. I went because you know Amanda Seals from Grenada. Right, right. She invited us to go. We went to Grenada. So right. I had, I didn't know the people to like rent the boat boat. So I was just talking like, yo, let's do a sunset cruise, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And they pull up in like some dinghy. Yeah, with nah. the motor up, and I'm looking at this nah, shit like nah, nah, the motor's out. And my nah. wife was like, let's go, and I'm like, nah, nah. We're not doing all that. But if it was up to her, she'd have been like, fuck it, let's get on the goddamn dinghy. And then we might have all drowned. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So, but little things, I'm saying, things that are life or death, things that, because women have blind spots because women are, you know, nurturers and they, they I don't want to say naive because naive isn't the right word. No, they just don't see a lot of the dangers that we see because yeah. they're not looking for them. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, like I, when I walk in a room, I'm automatically looking to where the shoot is at. Yes. Where's the fucking threat? Yes. In this room. They yeah, not yeah. she not doing that. Yeah. You said what? She said you to do that. She's saying you, she's Taylor. saying she looks at she looks at you to do that. I like love how Taylor's saying off the microphone. I'm glad you yeah, listen yeah. to SoundCloud comments. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, we almost read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I Thank did you. not want to do this, by the way. I did not want to put you through that. But Taylor was like, let's read the comments that happened on the sound. I love comment creeping. But listen, I just want to say uh, I, I Elvis' wedding yeah. made me want to get remarried. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, because I, because, because, because you know, financially, I'm a little bit more better now, and you know, it's really just fun. And I think that going back to what we was just talking about, yeah. when you've been with somebody for so long, yeah. and you're growing and you're evolving and you're constantly growing to love this new person, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because like I said, I'm, I'm not the same person at 20. I was at 30. Now I'm in my 40s, and it's the same with her. So it's like we constantly growing to love these people that we are. It's like, yo, why not do it again? And yeah. do it fly. Like, I want to have a fucking mariachi band at my wedding. Dude, I love saying mariachi. I man. want people to leave my motherfucking wedding and then go out and it's a bunch of vendors. 
He had all the New Mexico just in the hallway yeah, giving away shit, yeah, yeah. guitars it. and all kind of shit. I want to give away a car. I want to yeah. have donkeys walking around with shots of tequila on their back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to take a shot of tequila off the donkey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dude, this is I so want to walk into a man. hotel and say, I don't like the carpet in here. Get rid of that shit. And, and rebottle the whole shit just because you can. Because it's your big day. Even though you got a house in Santa Fe any fucking way. That was the fucking man, bro. So he really balled out. Man, come on, man. Dude, I was talking come about on, um Come on, man. How to do uh how to do a wedding. And I'm I'm very fortunate, right? Because I'm in the creative field. If I want to like flex my creative muscle, I got stand up, I got these podcasts, I got these different projects I can do. And I and I so I never felt a certain way about the wedding because it's like I already have all these outlets. I don't need to like take that on. If 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 my girl wants to do that when the time comes, Go for it. I got you. This is your day. Just flex, you know, and um, and I often feel like people who don't have those creative outlets, when the wedding comes, they're like, oh, no, I got some creativity. I'm going to show you how shit rolls. That's and a good that's a good point. I think it happens. And I, I feel like I dropped the ball. You know what? You did. I was there. My shit was basic. Yeah, it was basic. I wasn't involved, though. It was basic. It was, Listen, here's the thing. It was basic, but it was authentic. Yeah. And there are like distinct moments I remember. About it. I remember Kente trying to give a speech. That shit was hilarious. Stupid. But that was hilarious. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The the wedding itself was very pretty. Yeah. You know what I mean? The 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 ceremony was it called? Reception. No, no. No, the way I don't fucking remember. The, the, I was the, there though. In the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um yeah, whatever it was. Anyway, point is and the town that you did it in was right. Downtown if you ask Charleston. me, yeah, did, that's home. That's yeah, that, that was that was romantic. It was beautiful. But um, but you can stun. I could have stun. I could stun a little harder. It's a different thing. It's a different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so the other day we're just having this conversation just about weddings in general. It's like, what would you do with a wedding, right? And you know what I would fucking do if I was to do something. Let's just say, I think I would like recreate a kind of Burning Man situation. Right. Where mm. it's a weekend. I tell everybody the rules and the principles. They we basically rent out like a place by a lake. We rent out all the land and th we have a place where people can stop and you have to pick up your supplies. Now, we pre-purchase all the supplies and they're there, but you have to grab what you think you're going to need for the next three days. And everybody's surviving on their own. That's for the wedding. This is part of the wedding. Like, so I'm going to have all the water, the food, this kind of stuff. You go stop there. We're going to grab it. And then we'll have tents that aren't fully set up yet. You at least got to put a couple rods. We're going to do most of the setup, but you need to be invested in your survival. And then what I want to have is I'll have, I don't want it to be one of those things where like, you have to be here at seven. You have to be here at nine. You have to be here today. I'll have a few things that, that, that you know are going to happen, but I want to have like secret events that like people find out about four in the morning by the water. So basically you want to get married at Burning Man? I want to recreate my own and have like my friends and like have a bunch of people who are aware of it and people who aren't and have people get lost in it because I have enough attention on a regular basis. I don't need it to be about me, my wife. But it's your wife. It's not about you. It's about the bride. or my me and my wife. Yeah. I, I, but I'm I I truly want to share an awesome experience with these people, and I want them to have a fucking great time what, with it. What, what what you'll realize is weddings are for your significant other. Yes, it's for her. They're not for you. It's, and, and I'm totally yeah, okay yeah. with that. And I was like, listen, that's just me. If it's I was for the to throw it out, family. Yo, it is, so it is. Uh, this type of thing you're describing sounds amazing. But it's not when no, the no, no. 78 year old aunt has to no, show no, no. up. So, so, yeah, so, what, yeah, so what Chris, yeah, I'm what not Chris and Charlotte saying is like, but I'll send a great gift. I could be a cool bachelor. <laughs> could be a cool bachelor party. <laughs> but that's so that's the thing. Like maybe it's maybe it's like and as corny as joint bachelor parties are. Maybe there's some joint bachelor party shit right there. But like bachelor parties for people who never got pussy though. Nah, bachelor parties are for your friends. I have no bachelor party for what my life has been a bachelor party. Yeah, but like. It's not for you. That's what I realized. That don't get no pussy. Yeah, but they do get pussy. But they married, and they're like, "Yo, let me just live this life one more time." Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me, okay. One weekend, we're going. Is to it cheating if you get your dick stuck at a bachelor party? It depends what floor you're on the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah, a yeah, height yeah, yeah. thing. It's really what an if altitude. you don't pay? What if your man pays for you to get your dick stuck? Well, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't want it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know true. I mean? You true. didn't. You didn't really have anything to do with that. True. True. Yeah, I think that's faithful. <laughs> no, I can see yeah. your point. <laughs> anyway, I just think it'd be cool. But I agree with you, Chris. It's like, if you're accommodating family, that's not the one. Right. But I'll be honest, I, I feel no responsibility to accommodate family in a wedding whatsoever. Me neither. But that's what it becomes about. Yo, that's what it becomes about. I think if you're, if 
if your g- girl wants it to be that her family is paying for it. Because remember, back in the day, the family paid for it. So I was like, you better believe we're going to have a say. We're putting up all this it's money for it. So it's the dowry, real talk. So, But now, if you're doing everything for the wedding, I'm paying for the wedding. We don't need to invite my third cousin to this fucking wedding. Like, this is just the people I want to be exactly. there. And the people that want to be there. Don't do me no favors by coming to my wedding. That's why I'm getting Don't married. do me no fucking favors. I'm getting remarried in five years. Okay. Destination wedding. That, and destination's great because it weeds out the people right. that don't want to go. There you go. That Sit, Santa Fe is perfect. You, and then you could ball out because you Oh, no, just, I'm going to Anguilla. Regardless where it is. Yeah, yeah. But you could ball out a little bit because yes. it's like, hey, listen, if you wanted to put all this money up to come here, you must really fuck That's with That's all me. I'm saying. If you can afford to get here, boom, then you're supposed to be here. That's it. If not, I don't fuck with you like that no way. You are going to have a gay wedding. <laughs> 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 it's come Yo, full circle. Gay, I'm telling you, gay weddings are amazing, bro. Really? Yes. It was so funny. I was both I was, tuxes. Uh, yeah. What's the they gender dynamic? Suits. They both had on suits. Both suits. They both went. Yeah, suits, they both right? had on suits. They yeah, both yeah. had on suits. What's so funny is I met. Uh, I was with Angela Rye. We was in D.C. Friday because we done it for the Congressional Black Caucus. Right. And um, I was moderating this panel about can cannabis licensing be used for drug war reparations, but. Angela had this brunch and it was these two women in the brunch and I was just randomly talking to them mm. just, just having a conversation me and my wife we were just talking to them whatever and they was like where y'all headed we was like oh we gotta go to Santa Fe and she was like oh we love Santa Fe yada 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 and I was like yeah man I said I'm excited this is my first gay wedding and they were like oh, we were Angela's first gay wedding and I'm like Oh, I didn't even realize y'all was a couple. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just having a, I'm just having a conversation. And then I felt like a dickhead. Because I'm like, why did I just randomly bring up that we was going to a gay wedding? Because it's it's a But why don't I just experience. say wedding? Because it's a unique experience. You yeah, can always yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, unique yeah. experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This and, is, exactly. You're right. No, and, you're right. And here's the thing. By going, you're supportive. What do you mean? You don't go to a gay wedding if you hate gay people. I didn't even think nothing of it. I just love Elvis Duran. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Meaning like when you bring it up, like, yeah, I'm going to, it's my first gay wedding. There's no inherent homophobia in it because uh, you're supporting the marriage of two yeah, men. Yeah, I just love Elvis. I, I mean, yeah. yeah, you're right. It was a new experience. I've never seen that. Yo. You know what I'm saying? But but <clears throat> think about this. It's not just a new experience for me. It's a new experience for America. Yeah. How long has gay marriage been going on? Like four years, three, four years maybe? Has it been that long? Around 10 maybe. No. No, no, Hell no. not federally. Yeah. yeah, federally. federally when did Obama it's only, it yeah, it's only a few years. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I, I watched this movie uh, yesterday called The Goldfinch. I've seen you, that. You got, With Eddie Murphy? No, no, no. That's oh, Goldfinch. No, gold yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got you, got you. So, so I watched this movie Goldfinch, right? And um, new movie coming. It was a really fucking brilliant movie. But it's, it's f- how, do I, uh, how do I say it? It's funny when you don't even, I don't know how to even word it. It's funny when you realize your own bias. I basically realized my own bias. Explain right? to me. Talk to me. So I'm watching this movie. And part of the movie, there are these two kids. I think they're maybe like middle school, maybe like freshman in high school. Right. And um, the movie jumps around in time a lot. But they're they're doing like, you know, a bunch of drugs, you know, you know, trying acid, drinking, smoking. Their parents are neglecting them. It's really fucked up. Right. And there's this one scene where one of the kids is going to run away from home and go to New York. And he's fucking 14 years old or something like that. And his best friend, uh, who's been doing drugs and acid with and all this fucked up shit, you know, stealing, doing all this fun. And um, he's about to get in the taxi and leave. And his friend walks up to him and then kisses him on the mouth. Okay. Right? And my initial reaction was like, why the fuck does that have to be? it? They're kids. They're fucking kids. Do you Did need they allude to, show to the that? fact that they was a couple before? No. No, okay. they were like, and I was like, what, what are you throwing this in here for? They're fucking so kids. So he kissed without his consent? <laughs> he got there's me one too. Way, there's one way of looking at it like that, right? Okay. And I'm sitting there, and then my girl's just laughing. I'm like, why are you laughing? And she's like, well, because you didn't say anything about them doing acid at 14 and doing drugs and <laughs> drinking and but drinking that, vodka. Because that's the shit that has been oh, normalized us. Exactly. Yeah, Dude, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I realized my own shit. Like, oh, yeah. fuck, you're so right. Yeah, like, I yeah, had yeah. no problem with them doing these horrible, illegal things that kids should never fucking do yeah, 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 at 14 yeah. years old. And the second they kiss, I was just like. Conditioning, though. Why would you let kids do that? Conditioning. Is that what it is? Yeah, when you grow up and you hear Eminem say, uh, what did Eminem say? Ew. He, you know, he was rapped about two guys kissing and be like, ew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like stupid shit like that. Like it's conditioning. That's all. But I think it's changing though. I mean, just watching my own kids, they don't like every. Because it's the new normal. Exactly. So every year, three times a year, they get to choose their pronouns in school. Not just them, the entire school. 
That shit is so dumb, though. I'm sorry. Okay, let's pay some bills and come. Go go ahead. Hold that thought, Chris. We're going to pay some bills. It's a great conversation to start off. Yes. When we come back. All right. Now, uh, Boost Mobile. All right. Support for today's show comes from Boost Mobile. Switching to Boost Mobile gives you more. They're surprising people with more at every turn because Boost doesn't offer one great thing. It offers many great things like super reliable, super fast nationwide network and four lines for hundred dollars a month with unlimited gigs for data, talk and text and four free LG Stylo five phones for the whole family. It's more than you'd expect from a wireless service and it all comes with no annual service contracts. All right. Switch to Boost Mobile and get super reliable, super fast nationwide network so you can connect almost anywhere. Boost Mobile, the switch that gives you more. Offers and coverage not available everywhere. Free phone requires port in. Additional terms and conditions apply. Visit BoostMobile.com or your nearest retailer for details. Okay, okay? So now, Chris. You, listen, I, maybe I shouldn't start out with saying that's so dumb, but that's usually my... Well, let, let Chris finish his yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, so go. So let's educate us on this pronouns thing and choosing they or the or well, it, I, mean, I don't know if I can something. educate you. All I can say is that that's something that they each do three times a year, and they don't really think it's a big deal. So three times a year, right? everybody can flip their their gender. Right. I think the idea is they're trying for somebody because kids change as they grow. And I think they're trying to make the opportunity for somebody who changes their pronouns. We need opportunity. Okay, so Sam Smith came out this week as non-binary. Right. Yes. Explain to people what non-binary is. I do not fucking know. Well, we had a good. You don't think you're male or female. Yes. You just you just are. Last week we had a asexual because he's got a boy. Well, here's the thing that's interesting. You're non-binary. Right. Once you're non-binary, meaning you're not male or female, you're no longer gay, buddy. You could only be gay if you identify as a guy and you're into guys. I'm, yeah, I'm not even about to go down this rabbit hole because I really don't understand it. We had, um, we had uh, last week we had my man David Johns. We had uh, two people from the trans community, Nyla, 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 some, some. I can't remember Nala's last name, but salute to Nyla and Carmen. I can't remember Carmen's yeah. last name either. And we had Malik Yoba, and they, um. They were on and they were trying to explain to us the trans world and the the, the language and the lingo. Trans different. I'm trying to understand this non-binary. But no, they were they were talking about that too okay. because that's their whole thing. And a lot of a lot of women got upset at them because a lot of women were were mad because I think it was David, if I'm not mistaken. David said that there's no such thing as gender. Gender is a social construct. Gender is something that is assigned to you. By doctors, right? Okay, if I if I think deep enough about it, it could be a point there. Let me explain for everybody who jumps down my throat. Gender <laughs> is a label, right? So you're born, you got a penis, they call you a boy, right? Or whatever. You're, you're male. You're, male. You're born, you got a vagina, they female. call you a female, they call you a girl. Those are just names, right? Yeah. So gender, yes, that might be a social construct, but sex. The sex, biological. Exactly. The sex of what you are is not a social construct. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I, and I think people got mad at mad at David because he said that. And it almost kind of like just dismisses, you know, if you're born a, a woman and you're you're happy with being a woman and you're proud of being a woman and you embrace being a woman, it's kind of like just dismissing it. And, you know, I saw a lot of women saying things like, so I got ovaries for no reason. I get periods for no reason. I can get pregnant for no reason. Like, you can't just take away so our he's, identity. he's separating the way you feel and what you physically are. So the sex is what you physically are, meaning I have a penis. That yes. means my sex is male. But gender is yes. this idea that... Gender is, the, gender is labeling it as male or female. Right. Gender is yeah, putting yeah. the color blue for boys and pink for girls. Boom. Where that's all social construct. And that's, exactly. And you know what? That is completely that's, that's right. That's true. Yeah. Social construct. It's like there's no reason why boys are blue and girls are pink and yeah, that yeah, can yeah. flip. Look what you know, Harlem did. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden boys became pink mm-hmm. and girls, you know, I think probably still did pink, but it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. we, we add those things. Now, those things are indicative of traits that you see in the sexes. For example, you often see a more nurturing quality in girls. Like they're not playing with dolls because they want to. They're playing with dolls because they have a natural instinct. I wonder about that though. But I don't they've know done if that's these. True, yeah, no, I wonder about these, that. They've uh, done as, these studies. As having two daughters, 
That hasn't stood out with my experience. That's what I'm saying. I wonder but, about but that. But they've done extensive studies. They've done extensive psychological studies about, um, you know, what kids will do when you give them these types of things. And, like, you know, if you give the, the girls the dolls, they'll start, like, making their hair and they'll start, like, petting them. Well, what they'll, if like, you did that with guys? And what they if- start making them fight each other. And then they break their arms off. Like, every guy knows how to take the He-Man character's arm out of the socket. But what if you don't give the guy never a He-Man? A girl what if take you give a- the guy a Barbie? How would he What's treat the that difference? Because Barbie, Barbie, Barbie he is man a, got bigger tits than Barbie. No, <laughs> no, I'm saying Barbie is a woman, yeah. so he may treat the woman doll different than he would the he man doll. You know right. what I'm saying? Maybe I don't know. I don't think he would. I think that they. I think that there's a natural proclivity for most people, not all. What if you make the Barbie natural. scissor? If you what? She makes the Barbie scissor. Oh, I did that for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Them long legs. <laughs> that means you're definitely a we cisgendered, <laughs> heterosexual, <laughs> right? What I don't <laughs> understand is this. And, and and again, I would love to have someone here to get us to talk to talk about it, but how do you not feel like anything? How do you know what you feel like? I don't feel like a guy. I just feel like I feel. I've always wondered about that. Remember, like, I asked you that, Taylor. What the fuck does it mean to I feel said, like no, no, a I guy? Said, I, I asked Taylor. I, I, asked, I asked women that. I'm like, is it offending when a when a when a person says, "I feel like a woman"? Because how would the they inside? know what the fuck a woman feels yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're not a woman? It's not like you can sit down with that person and then they start describing feeling like a woman, and then you'd be like, "Oh yeah, that's it." Like, I don't know what a guy. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah. I don't know what feeling like a guy feels like, and I can t- I, I can tell you I why. Don't either. Like, I can say something like, I love, everybody knows I love girlfriends. I'm a girlfriend's fanatic. Yes. Right? I, they know I love girlfriends. Yes. But if I say that, guys will be like, you gay. Well, let me ask you this question. I'm gay because I like watching a show f- that has women? four black women? Yes. So I don't understand what that even means. Like, I don't know what it means like to say I feel yes. like a guy. Why don't you watch real man programming? Like yeah. Football like where Oz. guys in tights <laughs> tackle each other. <laughs> <laughs> that's what men do. I don't, but, 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 but no, that is, that's what they think. Right. right. Well, well, that gets back. In, that's why the shit gets confusing. What, what the non-binary people would say is the only reason you like football and these types of things as a guy is because you've been conditioned that conditioned way. That yeah. way. And I would make the argument that there are certain things that are inside of us that help us lean in that direction. Now, I grew up in a dance family. I went to the ballet young. I watched my parents dance. I was surrounded by this super effeminate dance world. I did not gravitate to that, even though that that was my environment. A hundred percent. I was playing basketball. I was doing all this guy shit. Now my immediate environment was all effeminate dancing. It didn't affect me. Why? You call that guy shit, but think about it. No, no, girl shit. I think that's the, oh, girl shit. The, okay, okay, the okay. dancing is girl shit. No, right? I thought you said you did a bunch of guy shit. But though. I did, I did the traditional guy shit. So things they say are guy shit. The things they say are guy yeah, shit. Yeah, so, yeah. so there was something. Now, granted, maybe my outside environment, my friends influenced me more, but my inside immediate environment did not make me embrace these things more. So clearly, maybe there's something inside of us that guys that maybe yearns for competition or, you know, physical contact. I, I got into fight sports. I was really, yeah. It, when I came from a family, it was not about it. So you, explain that. You know what's so interesting about that? Uh, I agree with everything that you're saying, but think about when you get older and you start to like embrace your, what they call sacred masculine or your, div- and I don't even know if I want to call it divine femininity because I don't know if it's feminine to just learn how to be vulnerable and learn how to deal with your emotions and start doing the healing work on yourself. Because those are things that I always Say saw it. women traditionally do. But now you're saying that's a construct. That's right? what I do. I don't know if it's a I don't know if it's a construct. No, you've been told that that's a feminine thing because that's the social construct of it. Well, no, but I, it no, was in you all, all the long. Yeah, by the way, I don't even know if it was a feminine thing. It's just that I only saw women doing that. Right. I only saw women doing the work on they self when it came to like mental health, when it came to emotional well-being, when it came to mindfulness. I only saw women do that. Like It's just like right. when you get a pedicure or a manicure. You only right. saw women do that, and then you're like... I like getting pedicures. Dude, I like having clean nails. I like getting my shit cut. It's so funny because like women, I know so many women that will just get a massage. Oh. Like they have a tough week and they'll just get a massage. And my my reaction to that is, wait a minute, you just don't develop like a hunchback like a man? 
Like that, that's what men do. Like our back hurts. And then we just slowly curl up into, into like question marks because we never address any of the issues that we just, ever have. Now massages aren't just a women thing now. Bro, we get them. Come but on, it is very, we, it's very rare. Schultz, come so, on. That's women ain't invent that happy ending, that's bro. That's not a massage. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a and, massage and first, to be honest then the hand job, bro. That will make you lean into your, your back problems. <laughs> that ain't fixing your posture. <laughs> Even your toes are curled. I love getting massages. I actually wanted to get a massage this weekend because we were staying at a, a, a hotel. In, it was the El Dorado Hotel and Spa. Mm-hmm. in Santa Fe. And oh, I'm you gotta like, take advantage. I'm like, let's go to the spa. And you I'm like, advantage. I'm calling them. I'm like, yo, can I get in today? And my wife is like, I don't want to go get a massage. I'm like, well, f- fuck it. And I said to the lady, my wife doesn't want to go. Bye. <laughs> like, so, and you said no. Yeah. So here's a question. Have you ever done that couples massage thing? I love it. What is the point of that? It's amazing. My theory, the only reason they have a couples massage is so that your wife knows you're not getting whacked off at the end. Nah. Why else would you be in the same room? Togetherness, serenity, peace. It's but just, you're not together. Your face is in the donut. No matter. You, it's just the energy. Like, Because if, if y'all together... You kind of like, like you, you just want to experience it together. Like when it's done, when you both of y'all finish for that hour, you're looking at each other like, yo, that shit. Was but you could do it incredible. in the room right next door. What is the idea about the couple's massage? It has to be some marketing play. There's no reason I, it makes any sense. I enjoy it. I just think it's dope. More so than if you were in your own room? There's anything different? Nah, because you zone out. Like it's a level of stillness. It's just a level of peace. Or maybe it's just the fact of doing it together. I don't know. It's like it's like you not you don't take two pl- different planes if you go into the same place. Yeah, but you got different seats. We you're not having by a, each other though. Yeah, but you're not having a couple seat. Hey, you want this hey, couple seat? You're not gonna sit on the plane and have your wife in commercial. While, I mean, in coach while you're in first class. So you you. <laughs> <laughs> it's my job to get us there. I just think it's something <laughs> you to do. decide your company. I just think it's something to do together. But we're getting off track though. Okay, we was talking about the pronouns. Yes, yes, they. What do you want? Yeah, yeah. What would they like us? To- <laughs> <laughs> What? We don't need you to talk. It's, but you're not going to hear me. Yeah, I can hear you fine. It's We're saving good. you. We don't, we don't want the listeners to hear you. That's the, those are the people who complain. Go, 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 go. You know how you just asked, like, what's being a guy and everything else like that? Yes. So does that take away from when people be saying, or when guys say, oh, I have testosterone, that's why I am this way. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there's a okay, good question. Okay, let's tell us, ask the question on the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just had to filter. Oh, oh, that, we just had to filter <laughs> to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> we, okay. didn't, we, didn't, we didn't want the question to go directly in your ears. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So we just had a nice little buffer, and that's now all. there's a decent that's question. All. Y'all can go. listen to it. Go, 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 go. go. Now don't fuck it up, okay? <laughs> Say, do you use the same no. words you just used. <laughs> exactly. All right? I hate you guys. Now. What I think about the chicken sandwich and <laughs> based off of what you guys are saying about what is being a man, so does that take away from being or having testosterone, how guys say you guys have testosterone, that's why y'all act the way y'all do. So basically you're asking about the what I which I think is very, very reasonable question is the biological differences. Mm-hmm. Men and women we know are different. We have differences, right? Absolutely. So even if you're a man who identifies as a woman. You truly cannot feel like a woman because you don't have the genetic makeup of a woman. You you truly cannot know what it's like to like ha- not do a pull up. Mm-hmm. No, I can't do a pull up. You can't do a pull up. Yes, I do. Now, by the way, I know Come some on, girls that do more pull ups than guys. Simone Biles. My homegirls, Mickey and Lisa Barber, they will wash you with pull-ups, bro. <laughs> Come on, bro. Bro, if I show you them on the ground, you'd be like, God, but they're Olympic track runners. They diesel. How do like- they identify? <laughs> As twins. <laughs> By the way, why would you want to pick a pronoun that Khaled has already made stupid? Like Khaled make the day the haters. Why would you yeah. want to be they? You don't want to be a day. Like, dude. But still though, Khaled's like being Khaled repositioned that word. Yeah. Like, why you want to be they? Yeah, they is a is a trick one. Yeah, yeah. Here's yeah. the thing. This is the thing, and this is the moral of the story for me. When we it need comes to up. get a they in here, though. Can we have a they in here? I don't know can... what a they is because this is my thing. I saw Sam Smith say that at one point he wanted to have a sex change, right? Yeah. So if you wanted to have a sex change, then that means you're changing your gender identity, right? No. So that means you're changing your sexual. Identity. Sexual identity. Well, well, gender is the social construct. No, I think you're changing your gender. But gender changes first, and then you change your sex to meet the gender. Yeah. Right? Gender is the one where we could pick. I don't even know. All yeah. I'm simply saying is, if you want to call yourself they or them, then why are you changing your gender? You should have both genders. It should be whatever. Like, it shouldn't matter is what I'm saying. No, but I'm saying if you want to be they, because that's multiple, you yeah. got to keep the dick and get the pussy. Huh? That's they. 
I don't know what you're talking about. That's them. Here's my thing with all here's my thing. This is what you say to your girl. You bet, yo, bring that pussy over here. Right? That pussy. But if you were like, yo, bring them shits. Oh, you can just say bring that to me. But if it's multiple, you can't say that. It's that's. Say those. Bring, bring those. those. <laughs> bring, <laughs> hey, bring those genitals bring over those here. Bring those to me. <laughs> all right? Listen, my, the moral of the story for me is this. And I, and, I, and I thought about this after we had the conversation with David Johns and, and you know, Carmen and Nala and, and Malik Yoba. I don't understand it. Right? Right. And that's fine. But this is what I do understand. I understand their right to exist. And I understand that they should not be getting killed for simply being who they are. That's it. Nobody should be getting killed. That's a baseline. Just it, it's world. not to some people those shows. I know, I know. We're, but we all agree that nobody should be getting killed. Now we we all don't agree because it is some people out here that's killing people just for being whatever it is that they are. Yeah, they're killing you because you're trans. They're killing you because you're black. You got somebody that might kill you because you're white. Like kill and you because you're we, Jewish. But we kill, agree that that's wrong. Yeah, we in this room. Yeah, we us. agree. And there's certain that's people now. that don't. <laughs> we us, okay. <laughs> All right, we us agree. So, yeah. <laughs> dude, I, it's a lot. It is a lot, and that is my point. We all must be patient with each other. I'm telling you, please read Malcolm Gladwell's Talking to Strangers book, and it's about how none of us know how to communicate with each other because we're all too busy yelling at each other, yeah. and we're all too busy acting like people should just be educated on these things that we're not educated about. But yeah. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't have the ability to learn or if you don't want to learn everything, all you simply need to know is Stay everybody inside. has the right to exist, and nobody should be getting harmed, discriminated against, or killed because of who they are. I agree are with they you. they choose to be. 100% agree with you. If you're an adult, do whatever the fuck you want. If you want to have those big fucking holes in who your ears, a shit? do your fucking thing. And I okay, yo, I'm going to tell you something. I used to yeah. always say, when, whenever shit like that comes up, I'd be like, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck I if you're trans. I don't give a fuck if you're gay. But I'm going to tell you something. They yeah, said yeah. something to me that made a lot of sense and yeah, I had yeah. to restructure how I say it, right? Yeah. It was like when you say you don't get care, it's like you're just being dismissive. Yeah. And it's like you're saying, you're like, you're like a, a white person who says, I don't see color when you know racism exists. What you should say is, I don't care about your lifestyle. Because I don't. Because I do care about your life. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I do care about your life. I just don't care about your lifestyle. Sleep with who you want to sleep with. Identify with whatever you want to identify as. Yeah. Do you. Simple as that. Yeah. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I don't care. I know you don't, but you don't. But just you don't, about all but of you, it. But you don't care about, you, 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 <laughs> you care about them as a human being. No. But I, I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> but I also don't care about most human beings. It's what not like, mean? I don't care. It's like, I don't care about the straight guy. I don't care about the gay guy. I don't care about the trans. Like, I just don't care you that much. You're just an like, asshole. Yeah, I'm not that I'm an asshole. I'm just being honest. Like, <laughs> we really don't care that much. We can act like we care about all human beings and then they're just bombing hospitals in Yemen and we're all like, oh yeah, like life is good. Is there oh, a new iPhone nah, coming see, out? I get what you're saying. I get like, what you're saying. Why are we, we acting can't, like we, we can't, fucking we love can't, everybody? No, no, no. We, we, I love everybody. No, 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 no. I think in I'm not mocking you. I'm just saying like, you know these people, yeah. Theory, we do love everybody, but we're really only aware of what's in our circle. Exactly, we're aware of what's here. So if you're in my circle, guess what? I love care. you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah, you're yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, if you're yeah, in yeah, fucking, yeah. I don't know, New Mexico, I'm not thinking we about you, we dog. Don't, we don't care about the slaves that are making our iPhones. Except we don't care. The slaves that are Part making our sneakers. Part of life sneakers. is not caring. Yeah. When you when think we, about how difficult it was for Professor X to hear all the people's thoughts in the beginning. Yeah. That's caring. When we Nobody hear, wants that. When we hear about bombings in other countries, we don't think about the innocent lives that were killed. That's we it. hear the word insurgents, and we don't think, man, those are men, women children That's they's it. thems that are getting killed you know what I'm saying I get what you're saying we only care about things that are in our immediate, immediate circle. circle and if it doesn't directly affect us then we're not even thinking That's about it That's why we don't care about global warming cuz it's not in a circle yet it's an arctic circle and I'm none gonna, of us I, live over there I don't, I don't care I'm not I'm not going to say I don't care about global warming I'm just going to simply say I don't think we can stop it bro And you know what Okay the earth is the earth baby Okay this shit opens up right now and swallows us whole okay. there's nothing we can do it's fine. If there's an earthquake in Los Angeles. There's an earthquake in New York right now. Okay. There's nothing we can do. That's it. <laughs> right. We're on the third floor. We good. Hey, what's That's up, it? man? Yeah, Grandma, what's happening? Do. You know what I mean? Nipsey, what's happening, my brother? Peace, man. Good to see you. Good. My homeboy Jarrell, what's up, brother? Good to see you, man. That's it. You hey, guys. Good to see you. By the way, that was the fun, one of the yo know, at Elvis's wedding. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had somebody giving, I forgot the guy's name, and I told him how great his speech was because he was a a pastor, but he was comical, right? Yeah. And he was talking about somebody's uncle or dad that died and he was like I know he's looking down or knowing him maybe looking up 
<laughs> and I'm going to tell you bar. why. You know why that's a bar? Because we always acting like people in heaven. They ain't all there. Everybody ain't in heaven if we believe. If you believe. Now, I don't believe in heaven or hell. I'm just saying that uh, that's the thing, heaven or hell. Why do we act like everybody's in heaven? Why does the pastor always find a way to get somebody in heaven regardless of how fucked up they were? Isn't that interesting? Like, hell's empty. <laughs> Like, nobody want to live in hell, or nobody has to live in hell. Like, hell got all this vacancy, right? Nobody there? Heaven's stacked, but hell got Heaven's all stacked. this vacancy, right? <laughs> I see. Satan just down there by himself waiting for company. Tons of room. So, that's it. Tons of room waiting to, for investors. Satan at dinner, there's nobody yeah, there. Nobody there at all. No, I'm it's saying. just Newark. Satan's it's like, just a block. Satan's like, I can't wait till they arrive. <laughs> all right? Satan wants some pronouns. Satan wants a group to sit at the He's table with him. He's accepting anybody at this point. Come on, man. Friends. It's some, on, listen, if you believe, that's what I hate about religion. Yeah. You can't believe certain parts of religion and not believe all of it. Bro, mm. some people in hell. <laughs> I don't care how much you loved him. <laughs> if you believe in hell, it's some people that you loved that did some shit. Where God is hell? hell? This is actually an important physical question. Where is hell? Because if... Heaven is in the stars and in the sky and in the clouds, and we know that we live in a spherical world. Yeah. There's clouds surrounding the whole thing. So where's the hell? Beneath the oil. It's beneath the oil? Yes. Meaning Shut the fuck up. Chris, why you say that with such confidence? Like you just know. Well, no. Like you've been there and came back. So here's like, a question. Chris so, died of Lyme disease and saw so, it for a little while. And then swam back up over the oil. Yo, son, I had a crazy <laughs> thought. I had a crazy thought. You want to know this thought? I think I was tripping. But uh, you know how like when you die, you see the light? Yeah. What if like, you know, reincarnation where you live again? Yeah. So like when you die, apparently you see this white light. I heard about it. Okay. Now, what if that's actually not a white light? What if that's reincarnation and that white light is just all the sperm that you're swimming towards the egg with? <laughs> yeah, right? So, so, tell me, yo, tell me that don't make a little bit of sense. Swimming through cum. Right, you're like, keep going, keep coming back. Keep going, that's it, yeah. right? And, and, and then when you don't officially die, your sperm didn't make it, but you're still alive oh, in this man. life. Uh, this could be it. Yo, that makes so much you sense. You could be running it back. When a baby, swimming it yo, back. You ever wonder what all that slimy shit is that's all over a baby when they come out the womb? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't even know what it is. Well, I know Placenta? It, but it is like pre birth? I don't know what that shit is. I like Andrew Steele. <laughs> Yo, dude, that's your dad's cum, dude. That white Just light is sperm, bro. That white light could be fucking sperm. sperm. So that's what I'm saying. Hell, we got no place for hell unless hell is inside the earth. Here's another oh, crazy man. thing. Here's I've had a couple crazy thoughts of like, okay, I'm, I'm watching this building go up in lower Manhattan, right? And it's blocking the view of this other sky rise. And I'm like, man, how much does that fucking suck, right? That you bought this probably million dollar apartment and- all of a sudden, another building's coming up and just completely blocked your view. And then my girl goes, oh, that's why you got to check for the uh, the air rights. And I go, what? And she goes, yeah. Some people own the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. First of all, how absurd is that? That you can buy the air. Yeah, that's why certain buildings will only let you build up, up, to, a up certain, to a certain height. Yeah. Because they purchase the air. Who do you purchase the air from? Who owns the fucking Yo, air? Jesus, you out there cutting side deals? Real talk. Yo, God wants to know, Jesus. Real talk. All right. The devil Your father down there. wants to know, are you out here cutting side deals? Son. <laughs> Son. How absurd That's is it? That's what God would say to Jesus. Son. Son. <laughs> Son. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you can't sell the air, Jesus. You can't sell the air. Yo, real talk. <laughs> In that moment, I'm going, oh, that's how you become a billionaire. You just got to invent a price for some shit that doesn't even have a price at all and isn't even sellable, right? You just invent money. Yeah. When you sell air, you're inventing money. And then I, and then it fucking hit me. I'm like, holy shit, what's Bitcoin? What's cryptocurrency? That's These why motherfuckers in, just invented that's money. That's why I'm not investing in none of that shit. Why? Because I don't know what the fuck it is yet. we have no clue. No, not what do we spend be? it? I don't know. Where do you spend Bitcoin at? 
I don't know. I, I don't know a lot enough of about smart it. people try to explain it to me. Me too, and I, I don't can't get it even for a second. I don't get to it. Comprehend it. So I don't like, get it. This. But isn't this crazy? Like we can invent the whole idea of real estate is fake. The whole it idea of fake. borders. Look, I, I was in Yellowstone. I was reading. I think it was a Crazy Horses, a book about Crazy Horse. Yep. And one of the biggest issues. Explain when Crazy Horse again. Crazy Horse is he that was uh, one of the leader Indian of the, leaders yeah. who fought back against the white expansion. And one of the right. biggest problems was the Indians or the Native Americans had no concept of the idea of a border. The whites would say, this is the border. They said, there's no... What, what? We go where the buffalo goes. When the buffalo like, goes there, we go lake. there. This is all of ours. we stop at the lake. The yeah. earth belongs we, to all of us. We stop yeah. at the mountain, but this is the line that yeah. we can't cross, and you own this. They didn't it understand. Was a, it, it, Chris. It was fake to them. Dude, Chris, everybody goes like this, and this Colin Quinn right. had a joke about this, but everybody's, uh, you know, when uh, the, the, the the Europeans bought Manhattan from the sure. Native Americans? So... Everybody talks about how the Native Americans made this horrible deal, right? right? Because they're like, they traded Manhattan for a couple necklaces and some shells and some pearls, right? What idiots. You have to understand, the Native Americans thought they won that deal. Yeah, why are you calling them idiots? They didn't know any better. No, 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 no. They thought the whites didn't know any better. The Native Americans during that deal were going, these idiots think you can own land. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> we're fucking idiots. We got free pearls. We got free necklaces because you think you can own, no, we can own land. Right, yeah. And they found out very quickly that you can. But the point is, we make all this shit up. So if we want to be fucking billionaires, if the three of us in this room right now, sorry, you guys are cut out. The three of us in this room want to be billionaires, we should just think of the next thing that is nothing that people will be willing to buy. Uh, or not even you willing to buy, willing to use. That's what social media is. Okay, keep somebody, going. Somebody looked at these smartphones and was like, okay, these motherfuckers got these shit in their hands all day long. Let's give them something to do. So that's where these mobile games come from, these apps, these social media shit that just keep us on there all day long, occupying our fucking time. Holy shit, Cause, Charlamagne. Because we have nothing Followers, to- likes. That's it. People buy followers and buy- that, that is imaginary. I'm, that's uh, air rights. It's, no, it's not even air rights. I'm actually buying the rights to your ego. I'm feeding your ego. I, I've given you a way to constantly get your ego fed all day, every day. The validation that all of us human beings seek on a daily basis. Here you go. Oh, here shit. goes your Facebook. Here goes your motherfucking Twitter. Can here goes you your Instagram. Can you pay rent in, in ego? No. <clears throat> Can you pay buy food in ego? No. But we're still willing to pay for it. Yeah. It's it's like, you, you, does your, do your daughters ever play any video games where you can like buy things within the video game? Yeah, that's how Fortnite is. Fortnite. I mean, my, my daughters don't play it, yeah. but that's how Fortnite stays rich. Think about that. You are buying a fake thing. You are buying a thing that doesn't exist in the real world. Like, when I buy a hammer, at least I have a hammer. I don't know how that Fortnite... Oh, yeah, yeah, cause, no, no, cause, no, you got to think, though. Fortnite to these kids is a world. So if you can buy... I think they call them skins. Doug. So if you could buy your Fortnite character a hat, right. or buy him a new dance move... We're living in the simulation. Now, that's out. fucked up. Talk to me. I tried that with me early, and I was what? like... You're trying not to buy it. shit on that. I was like, no, I'm not buying something that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist, but we do it, so Chris. So you the cure for Lyme disease wasn't on the game. You wouldn't do it, you wouldn't do it just, just because? I'm selling the ale rights to all your houses. And <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think real estate is a, not a thing, though? It is, but he's it's saying it's a social it's, it's, construct. I yes, mean, you it could, is. You, you could say no. I think it but, used to be a social construct. Well, we we've come to accept it as a real thing, but historically, you know, oh, you own this little lot. It's, it's something that a government or a group of people. I'm reading a book, a very interesting book called Boom, which is about uh, the year the Oklahoma Thunder traded Harden, but also about the founding of Oklahoma City itself. Which is insane. I don't know if you guys know about how Oklahoma City was founded, you mm-hmm. know? This is an interesting story. Yeah, go, yeah. On, go on, go on, go on, go on. So basically, it was Indian Territory. And this is about 1870, 1880. And, they, and it was Indians who had they'd forced the Seminoles out of Florida, all these different groups. And they forced them out of what's now basically Oklahoma. And you have this wide open space that nobody's occupying in theory. So the federal government decides on April 24th at noon, 1889, we're opening it up. And whoever comes and grabs the land, it's theirs. Now, the Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma Sooners right. are the, the football team, the college football team. Right. And the reason they're called the Sooners right. is because they wanted to be there first. They wanted to get there soon. So, Were there Native Americans still on the land? No. Okay. The Native Americans were kicked off, but they basically said to all the whites, and I guess some blacks too at nah, the time. it's pretty much like it 100%. Was, it was 100% white. But they basically were like, yo, whoever gets here first, you put your spikes down, that's your land. Because that's how shit used to work back in the day, right? But there were people that actually camped out. They were hiding in trees. They were hiding in caves. Because you weren't supposed to start till noon. They yeah. had all sorts of outrageous 
cons designed to get there first. There were yep. guys who were going to fly in on balloons and drop themselves in the middle of Oklahoma City. <laughs> yeah. So it's like people buying Yeezys. <laughs> yes, dude, they were lined yeah, yeah, yeah. up. You just can't that was the first door, door to open. drop. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they did that, and that's why they're called the Sooners. So at 12 noon, somebody shot off a cannon, and you had a, basically 100,000 people rushing into this area to claim, uh, that's literally the claim. They put the stake in the ground and you could claim a certain amount, but there was no government in there to organize it, right? Jeez, thank God for realtors. It was the, it was a disaster. <laughs> so you had armed groups facing off and somebody would claim this piece and then they claim it and it was like... You kick your spike out? Like, who's, yeah. the, like, who's, oh, the, who's the official to say no they official. got here first? No official. And then the people who tried to claim to be the officials, well, that was challenged, right? I mean, the, the way the book put it is, it's like, if you were trying to think of the worst way to start a city... This is it. Like, they literally picked the absolute worst way. And then it slowly sorted itself out over the next In uh, Burning Man, every year, that is the process. What? The map is 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 set up. So how do they avoid what happened in Oklahoma City? It is. That's why it's the most fascinating place in the world, man. For one week, it's the most fascinating place in the world, dude. It's people show up, there's the map, and you right. basically stake your claim. You put your spikes down. You create your territory. And... For whatever the fucking reason, well, the states people are, a lot are organized lower because you know you're leaving. You know at you're the leaving. End of, exactly. Whereas in Oklahoma City, this is your. This, this, was every, this is it. This was every loser in America's chance to finally get rich. You struck out in Baltimore. You struck out in Santa Fe. Wherever you get the right piece of real estate, you've just saved your life. Yeah. So people would make their claims, and then they were ready to die over it because this was their last. Well, let me tell you something. It's, it's it's amazing how they keep records of stuff now. Like, cause this is a, it's actually a piece of property I'm trying to purchase now in South Carolina, and I I thought I all but had it, and now it's like an old document that popped up, and they're like, "Hey, this is Ed's property." Right. So they got to contact everybody. On, I'm talking about everybody. Some are living, some are dead, to make sure that nobody else wants this property because they have first right a refusal on it. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So uh-huh. it's just like it's just interesting how they keep records now for real estate because. It's not too much shit that's just unclaimed out here in motherfucking America anymore. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's crazy on some level that like once it's yours, you just get to keep it forever. You're goddamn right. And you should keep it in the family. I'm like, apps, man. Listen. Look, that's how you build wealth, but it is also how you build disparity, right? Because eventually you run out of shit and then there's the people who have it and the people who don't and they have no chance to get it. And that's the story with Oklahoma City, right? Like there are, there was a fairly sizable black population in Oklahoma City. They weren't part of that first wave because there yeah. was no way that black guys were going to try to rush in with a bunch of 100,000 white guys with guns in 1889 yeah. and elbow them out of the way. They knew they had to stay back. You don't think it's possible they just showed up late? Sorry. Anyway, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, we just get there Tuesday, guys. <laughs> I'm not giving up no land. Cause you shouldn't. Nah, you shouldn't. bro. Cause, eh, I'll tell you no, 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 no. You shouldn't. You shouldn't yeah. because this is the way that this is the way the world is controlled and this is the way wealth is controlled. 100% you shouldn't. But what's what I'm sure maybe you has happened to you, but has happened to me in terms is in, in my life is I've gained wealth is the more I get it, the more I start to realize how fucked up the system is. When you don't and have you know, it, bro, it, it's, it's a little unfair, man. I'm going to tell you why it's not fucked up for guys like us. All right. Because, uh, I mean, even though, you know, my dad, my dad had a construction company and he, you know, had his bouts with the drugs and alcohol. We, we grew up poor. Yeah. Nothing was handed to me. And I mean, right. your, your mother had to ballet Worked her studio. fucking ass off. That's what I'm saying. So, Ballroom dancing. And, and, and both poverty. Of, we both took career to wealth, paths yeah. that had nothing to do with what they were doing. Correct. So we had to really get it from the bottom, bottom, bottom. But. You more bottom than me. I had, I had, I came from privilege. My parents, you know, supported me. They, they paid for my college. I had a huge advantage on but a lot of people. you go to school for comedy. Correct. You know what 100%. I'm saying? But I'm, I'm talking about like as far as like. Earning we, in my career, I got that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we talk about racial wealth gaps in this country, the reason there's a racial wealth gap is because systemically it's just, it was, it was, they made it hard for black people to obtain wealth. Since systematically, yeah. Yeah. This is the best argument for reparations, in my opinion. Yeah. It, yeah. So, so that's, what the fuck were we talking but about? But we were talking about land, and you were going to say something about land, but you were like, I'll do it off well, That's air. what happened in but, Oklahoma City. Eventually, there was an African-American community that got established, but mm-hmm. it hemmed in the white. Oklahoma City, everyone ran to the center, and yeah. then when all the spots, they wanted to push out. And a black community emerged, and they basically kicked everybody out, knocked it down, and then forced those people out even further. I really forgot what the fuck I was wanting to talk about. Could but it I, possibly have anything to do with, and maybe we transition and, and it reminds you of it, to, with uh, the summit that Diddy put on? 
No. No. <laughs> but, uh, I was just talking about I was the racial. I guess I was saying I'm not getting rid of any land because the only way that you you close that divide is that you start increasing yeah, generational I, wealth. Yeah, because when yeah. you think about, you know, back in the day, they wanted the 40 acres of mute. That's how important land was. Whenever I'm out the country, man, and I'm having conversations with just random people around the pool or on the yep. beach, and they're talking to me about, you know, like how they got there. They're like, yo, I, you know, I, I, got a, I got a land lease, and it's just... Walgreens is on my property and they pay me eight thousand dollars a month, ten grand a month. Like that's right. really that my, my thing. I like Yo. to buy com, I like to buy commercial land right. that you can put commercial stuff on. Yeah. Because to me, that's where you get your money. Well, you know what I'm saying? You sign in a hundred year lease. When McDonald's comes in, year lease, they, 30 year lease. Oh my son, god. Hundred. <laughs> They'll sign hundred year well, leases. Well, McDonald's is a real estate company. People don't realize right. they that. own everything top McDonald's of bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They, they're one of the most brilliant companies in the history of like humanity. But absolutely. But um because they're vertically integrated, right? They own the farm that they farm the, the produce on. All the way to the brick and mortar location where they sell Absolute the burger. Absolutely, goddamn Lulu. Like that's fucking impressive. Dude. And they own the fucking probably own the factories they're making this GMO shit too. Hell yeah, <laughs> <All right. laughs> they're not licensing out. But I get what you're saying. It's like when you see the people who have made money. Look, we're not making any more land. Nah. So if you own a piece of this shit, you own a part of the world a piece in of the perpetuity. Earth. Absolutely. But you guys don't worry that there's a bubble. Like I, I keep feeling oh, there's a huge real estate. So here's bubble the thing: about there's pop. there's a huge real estate bubble, undeniable, right? right? But these billionaire motherfuckers, they don't care about a ten year drop. This is a fifty year game for them. Like, like look at all the people. Like even in Brooklyn, right? Sure. You live in Brooklyn. You see these neighborhoods in Brooklyn that these communities went in, bought up factories that nobody was in sure. forty years ago, and now all of a sudden they're like luxury apartment buildings in Williamsburg. And you're like, oh, that's the game. The game ain't, let me try to double nah, up in five years. Hell no. The game is, my kids' kids Absolutely. are going to be multimillionaires because of what we scooped up now. Why do you think it's going to be a real estate burst? What do you oh, mean by that? Oh, it's coming down, dog. Uh, well, well I'm going to tell you, these are the people who are going to have the problems. The people who are buying land and buying property but taking loans out to get it. I don't do that. You when go, I buy my property, I buy cash. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that's a different story. I, that, You're in a different game. I had yeah. this shit on a reel to last week. Really? <laughs> what happened? Because we was on the phone talking about a piece of, come up, my, we own a piece of property in Moss Corner that we've had for years, and it's so much development around it right yeah. now. Like, you, I, I already see the vision, and I know what's about, I'm like, a gas station has to be here. A convenience store has to be here, just because of all the new neighborhoods and stuff that are on this property. So, it's a piece of property next to my mother's that's for sale. And they told me the price. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get that. Let's just go ahead and have the whole four acres. And I'm talking to her. She's like, why, you know, why do you want it? I'm like, why not? And she was like, well, what do you see for it? And I said the same thing I just said. Like, I mean, I'm like looking at all the development around it, all the new neighborhoods. And I'm realizing that it's, the, the nearest gas station is four or five miles down the road and then two, three miles on the other side. So it's got to be something smack dab in the middle right here. Yeah. And I just could hear her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I can see that too. So now all this, she's trying to buy my mom's property. Crazy, like they like name the price. Oh, like, now we, they want to buy. Yeah, we not. I, I I know what's about to happen. Okay, this lish tongue motherfucker who didn't go to college has some vision. I know what's about to happen. No, we not sell. We keeping it. We'll do a lease if something comes. And I want the other piece of property. You know what I'm saying? Now, she's talking to me, and I was telling her about some other properties I own in Monk's Corner, and she was like, "Well, you know, if you're you're looking to you know lease out that one of those buildings, um, you know, like it could help you with your mortgage every month." I'm like. I don't have a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought this yeah, yeah, cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, oh, how much was it if you don't mind me asking? And I did not mind telling her. She fucking <laughs> tried to play me. <laughs> All right. So it's just, I don't even know why the fuck I even said that. <laughs> why did I tell that story? What, 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 um, what I'm long time moving. brilliant, what long time brilliant <laughs> idiot listeners are witnessing, this is, this must be pretty cool for you guys, is, um, you're really witnessing us grow up in front of your eyes. It's all, it's kind of odd. It's I gotta like, live your truth. We gotta live our truth. Shows. No, no, hundred percent. But it, it it's such a crazy experience. So when you start this podcast, Star Shame Enterprise, first episode ever with Jazz with Fly, Jazz Fly, shout Jazz Fly, to Jasmine Waters, like us, like you really coming into your own in the business and you really kind of having your moment. And now we're talking about like real estate and land purchases to set up like future generations. This is a crazy journey. Yeah, we this whole it up thing, for future dude. idiots. Oh, for sure. The truth to the matter is you got to spread this wisdom, bro. I want the next generation to have fuck you money early. Mm. So they don't never have to censor themselves for a second. 
Mm. <laughs> right. So, so when the next wave of comedians come, next wave of radio personality, next wave of podcast, or whatever the fuck it is, yeah. they on some like suck my dick, y'all can't stop my bag if you try because yes. I don't get just my bags from this. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Yes. So it's like fuck it, let's go, and and not even not even on on a, on a level of I'm gonna offend you, and I don't give a fuck because I don't think either one of us. Try to offend people on purpose, but when, no. when, when you're trying to figure things out and you're having conversations about certain things and you're discussing certain things, you may offend along the way. Yeah. So if that happens, you know, and motherfuckers try to jump out of here and oh, you canceled it, this and that, whatever, whatever, whatever. You don't even got to worry about that. You know. You can't cancel me if I got fifty mil. You can't. You can't cancel me if I got three mil. Facts. Facts. Buy one fifty. I got three. Little yacht, little yacht I'm situation. Doing, little I'm yacht. doing fine in life. We all are. Yeah, 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 Thank yeah. God. All praise God. God bless, God. man. Real talk. Now we spoke about McDonald's. Let's pay some bills and come back and talk about Bill Maher and James Corden and fat shaming. Ooh, ooh, I think it's a good idea, uh, guys. Nine times out of ten, you're overpaying when you shop online. Unless, of course, you use Honey. Honey is a free browser extension that saves you money wherever you shop online. Just think about it like this, okay? The average Honey user saves about $126 per year. That's free money that you save. You don't have to do anything different. You just use Honey and you get to save the $125 every year, $126. 25 cups of cold brew right there. A pair of AirPods because you know you're going to lose them. Or 126 tacos from your favorite food truck. It's no wonder Honey has over 100,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome store. Time Magazine even calls Honey basically free money. Funny, because I just call it that, Time Magazine. Great minds think alike. Listen, there's really no reason not to use Honey. It's free to use, installs on your computer in just two clicks, and it'll save you money so you can treat yourself to something nice. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash idiots. That's joinhoney.com slash idiots. Idiots. And um, now we're back. Oh, my God. I got some church announcements I'd definitely like to tell you guys about. Very important. Big deal. Big deal. Big deal. Australia, we are coming to you this week. Matter of fact, by the time you guys are listening to this, I'm already in Australia. Me, Alex Media, Mark Gagnon, okay? Uh, A bunch of great Australian comics are going to be open on the shows. Um, We're going to be in Adelaide, Perth, uh, the Perth show is almost sold out, so get that real quick. Adelaide, we got a few tickets left. Perth show is almost sold out. Might be. Go check that. Brisbane, first show sold out. We added another show. Sydney, two shows sold out. We added a third show. Melbourne, two shows sold out. We added a third show. Go to theandrewshows.com. Get those tickets. Um, I also got uh, I also got two big announcements. Um, New York. You guys sold out Town Hall. That's the biggest venue Ooh. I've ever played, man. I'm very excited about it. Ooh. Show is... The show was over two months out, so we said, fuck it, we're going to add another one, okay? I was nervous, I was being a little bit pussy, I was like, but what if we don't sell it out again? Nah, we going for it, okay? So New York Town Hall, first show sold out, we're adding another show, November 22nd, the tickets just went on sale, by the time this is out there, theandrewschultz.com, same thing with Boston, sold out the Wilbur Theater, that's amazing, we're going to come back and we're going to do it again, another one at the Wilbur Theater in Boston, I was being a little bit of a baby. I was being a little scared, but now we're going to really fucking go for it. I appreciate you guys for supporting. A lot of you guys have been reaching out, asking for tickets, asking to add another show. So, you know, we did exactly what you want. So, theandrewshows.com for all those. Let's go for it. Matador Tour. New dates, new cities being added every week to the to the tour. So, go to theandrewshows.com. Get that. Charlamagne, any, any uh, church announcements? Oh, church, man, I don't even fucking remember. That's all good. Where the fuck am I going? I don't know. That's all good. That's all. Oh, so let's. I really want to talk about. Um, I really want to talk about. Uh, uh, Killer Mike's. Oh yes. Speech. Come, I don't, it's we, not even a speech. It was just his like. That's Killer Mike being Killer Mike, dude. We've been longtime Killer Mike fans here. Uh, You've been like a, that's an my amazing friend. celebrator of Killer Mike. He's one of my favorite rappers of all time. Top five, top seven favorite rappers of all time. And the only reason I say top seven because I have a top seven. But he's one of my favorite rappers of all time. He's just a great human being. Yeah. First met Killer Mike in two thousand three, maybe oh two oh three, maybe I don't remember. Back in Columbia, South Carolina, Hot One O Three Nine. And I just remember the first time I ever met him because he was with Big Boy and they was doing the Purple Ribbon All Stars album. And he's he goes, "Yo, I love your Jays." Cause I had on the Jordan threes, and it might have been fake. 
but I don't even know. Right. But he gave me a compliment. I was like, okay, dope. And it's just like that whole day we ended up hanging out. Because, you know, I was doing radio in Columbia, like a lot of times. So I interviewed them and then yeah. we hung out at a club later on. And he's, yeah. yo, Killer Mike has never been anything but Killer Mike. The Killer Mike y'all are just witnessing now and saying how brilliant he is and this and that. Yep. He, has, he, has, he has never mm-hmm. been another way. Ever. It is what it's it's pretty amazing what what we're seeing it's like we're watching the message and the messenger unite and you get to see this like every so often in history mm-hmm. where the time requires a message and a messenger and sometimes you get the messenger and sometimes you get the message and you get them separately but right now there is a time in history where this message is needed and we have a messenger who can deliver it and the message that needs to be delivered. Well, and it is fucking you're, you're uh, at, so fucking brilliant. Here's man. the most brilliant yeah. thing about Killer Mike, right? I've I've Killer Mike has always been Killer Mike. And I've seen people react to him in different ways. Remember they tried to cancel Killer Mike a couple years ago for some bullshit because mm-hmm. he decided to do exactly what everybody's applauding him for right mm-hmm. now. Killer Mike went and sat with another black man on mm-hmm. NRA television. Mm-hmm. To discuss 2A, Killer Mike's a big 2A guy, and everybody was killing him simply because he was on NRA television. But you're applauding him now because this week he told y'all at the Revolt Summit, fuck all that bickering, fuck all your differences, fuck, you know, arguing over which master to serve. Yes. He was like, if even if you don't agree with this person, take the good of what they're saying. Mm. If you don't agree with that person, take the good of what they're saying. Mm. And let's all put together those good ideas and come up with an agenda that can benefit us all. You know how I know that that this really touched a chord? Talk to me. Is I had different groups of people reach out. I had conservative friends reach out. I had really uber liberal friends reach out. Unbeknownst to each other with the same thing. Yo, have you listened to this Killer Mike thing? Yo, this guy's the truth. It was zero pander. You're late, first of all. Listen, they're late, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, remember, a time requires everything. It would have been too early before. You know who now the X Factor was? It's necessary. You know who the X Factor who? was that got Killer Mike's message registering with all of those different people? Who? Candace Owens. Interesting. And when I saw Candace Owens was going to be at the Revolt Summit, Interesting. you know, people start hitting me, sending it to me, saying this yeah. is fucked up, whatever, whatever. No, and I'm like, no, no, why? No. You need the voice. I'm like, it's not fucked up. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why it's not fucked up. You may not agree with everything Candace Owens says. You may not agree with who she chooses to support, mm-hmm. Donald Trump. But sometimes Candace says some things. That are accurate. Lot, and, not, and, and not even sometimes. She says some things that I agree with. Yes. And she says some things that I don't agree with. Guess what? Just like everybody fucking out. Just like your parents. Just like just everybody. Just like your uncle. Just like everybody. your aunt. Everybody. You can go through Thanksgiving dinner. You can listen to a political Killer debate. Killer Mike said something on that stage, man. And I, I, would tell, I used to tell Van this all the time when it came to reference to Candace Owens. Because there's certain things Candace would say. Mm. And I'll be like, bro, that's exactly what the Nation of Islam says. That's exactly what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says. That's exactly what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says. She may not know that. You know what I'm saying? But those are some of the things and that what did they Mike say. say. Mike pointed at her and said, everything she's saying, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been saying and, for years. And what did when he when he challenged the audience, he he, he didn't panic. He was like, he was like, this is your homework. Go out and study these people. Absolutely. And he said one person, and then Candace was like, tried to give some pushback. And he no, was like, Candace didn't get pushback. Candace said, yes. Oh, no, no, no. Go, go study these people. And then I think Candace said one thing, and he was like, hold on, I got you. Well, no, what, I got no, no, you. No, no. What, what he told her to her point, he was yeah. saying to her, uh, he, because when T.I. asked her, when, when, was the, uh, when was America ever great? Great, right, right. And Candace was like, we can make bl- black America great again. And T.I. was like, no, answer the question. When was America ever great? Yeah. You know, for black people or whatever, whatever. He didn't give Candace a chance to answer the question, which I think he should yeah. have. But if you go back and listen to Killer Mike, Killer Mike actually answered the question. Right. Killer Mike gave a moment in time where he thought it was great for black people in this country. And if Candace was like, that's what I was trying to say. And he goes, no. <laughs> you, I got to. Yeah. You didn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had your moment yeah, 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 to get yeah. this off and you didn't say it. So let me handle it. Right, he was right. like, but that ain't in the sight. That's not a diss to you. Yeah. yeah You're yeah. saying you didn't get it. Like, let me get this. Yeah. 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 I, yo, man. Killer Mike is just a brilliant dude. But but think about that, right? It's like, here's this guy up there who's sitting with 
what seem to be mortal enemies when they're talking, right? Like a T.I. and Candace, when they're talking to each other, they seem to be mortal enemies. They That's seem only like, because of the way the media has painted it. No, no, no. T.I. is the hero. No, I know. Candace is the villain. No, I know, I know. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like even in their even in their debate, they're not really having dialogue, right? They're both like kind of talking to each other and nothing, nothing is really getting done. Doesn't mean that T.I. doesn't truly believe and want to help with his idea. And so does Candace. She wants to help with hers, right? This is what I'm talking about, message and messenger. Mike comes in and says something, and then both Candace and T.I. agree. If you watch T.I. when he's talking to Candace, like, and don't get me wrong, he had his moments where he pushed back on Candace hard. Yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of times when Candace was talking, when she was talking about fathers not being in the home, yeah, and yeah. the illegal immigrants and everything, T.I. was shaking his head like, okay, that's the point. She got a point. And even when she said what she said about the immigrants, T.I. pushed back on that and was like, so what? Killer Mike explained why she was right. Mm -hmm. Killer Mike was like, I agree with her. You know what? It, One it, thing she said that registered with me a lot, black people haven't had, black people haven't realized their own political power. Yes. Like, you know, it would be dope if we learned how to vote in these blocks. When you take the 13% of the population and we moved yeah. like how the Tea Party moved. And what she was trying to say was, yep. yo, y'all got all this political cachet now. Black people, we had this political cachet now, but the brown people about to have that in a minute. You know what I'm saying? So, so get on board. But what Killer Mike was saying to her was, you're right when it comes to the jobs and all of that stuff like that. But when it comes to illegal immigration, they're not just looking at brown people. They're looking at black people, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he said uh, America is always going to have a slave class. And if the slave class ain't black people, if the slave class ain't brown people, it'll be those people that are mass in, 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 incarcerated. That's not America. That's capitalism. Well, that's America's a capitalist country. Right, 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 right. But yeah, yeah it, it is It is bigger than just America. Meaning like a, capitalist, a capitalist system is always going to have, have a slave class, a, a quote unquote slave class. Like the, the, when we develop the minimum wage, that just replaces. Well, America's different. Yeah, I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. Because of the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment literally says if you're in prison, you're a slave again. Sure, sure, sure. So sure, sure, sure. it's like, <laughs> right, so, right. But so it, whether it's black people or illegal immigrants, if it's not them, it's, they're going to take those people that are incarcerated, which usually are high levels of high populations of black people right. and they'll be the new slave class. So right. that's what Killer Mike was saying. We can't just be so, so gun-ho about keeping yeah, yeah. everybody out and saying fuck all illegal immigrants. Right, but outside of all just immigrants. like imprisonment, it, it, it is going to be part of a capitalistic system where you're going to have a certain amount of people work for the other people. I mean, that's, yeah. that's just what happens. And then, I mean, there's an interesting... I mean, I like the political aspect of it more so than Dude, I, I just love, and we can get into that discussion later, but like, I just love the idea what he said was stop trying to pick stop bickering over who's the best master what we need to do is come together and decide what we want and we need to ask everybody here that disagrees and find the things we all agree, agree on and we need to have 10 points and then we need to serve those up to every single politician Absolutely. that wants our votes and say if you want our votes this you have to want. meet and you know what fuck yeah do that shit Absolutely. because that's literally think about this that's what every other group does <laughs> right and they have advantages on you guys yeah. right there's like shared history and that kind of stuff like that but there's Literally, when an immigrant group moves to America, they vote in blocks. They vote in blocks, and that is why these certain immigrant groups they they have a small uh, you know area that they occupy. It might be in New York, it might be in parts of Brooklyn, it might be down to wherever it is, and they'll vote in blocks and they'll get representation from their block mm -hmm. in you know state assemblymen, Absolutely. and then eventually that kind of moves up. But at least they're understood. Now, are they going to have to sacrifice some things? Yeah, they are. You always got to sacrifice you things. You always got to sacrifice. But listen, it does nothing to just complain and yell and, Not at all. and tweet and fucking hashtag. Start making and, moves and in I, this game. I agree. And that's why I said Candace was the X Factor because when I saw that she was going to be on that revolt stage, people was hitting me saying, oh, this is fucked up, whatever, whatever. And I said, the beauty about this right here is they're going to have a conversation, right? Mm. And they may get at each other, whatever, whatever. But I knew Candace was going to say some things. That was going to register because Candace, I don't think Candace has ever been in front of an audience that black. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think she's been in front of an audience of black people, but you know the black I'm talking about. Yes. That black that hoots and hollers at you. Revolt and black. There you go. There we you go. You know what I'm saying? Booze yeah. you. That, yeah. That's Showtime at the Apollo. <laughs> Keep digging your grave, Damon Lemon Black. All right. <laughs> okay. But I knew that she was going to say some things that was going to connect. And I knew the people that checked for her were going to see Killer Mike. Yeah. And even T.I. I didn't know Tamika was going to be on the stage, but I knew that they were going to say some things that was that, that Killer Mike was going to connect with people too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that helps to bridge gaps and make people realize, man, we... Because all you need is a couple things in common with somebody to realize, like... One thing. Yeah, really? Yeah, 
That's you it. need one thing in common. That's it. Every time you're in That's Aguila, it. you're in one of these fancy resorts, and you one, connect with. You have a conversation. It's one thing that makes you just right. You start kicking it when you start telling each other your whole fucking life story. It could be. And by the way, it could be something as simple as your kids. That's it. I meet somebody. I met a dude the other day. I met somebody in Turks and Caicos. This guy, and he's from Long Island. I, can't, I wish I could remember his name. He had three daughters. I got three daughters. That's it. So I'm like, yeah, he was a hoe in the past life, huh? And he was like. <laughs> was I? <laughs> was I? I not, next thing you know, I'm talking to him. My wife's talking to his wife. We just kicking it. We laughing. We joking. We sharing stories and experiences. That's all it takes. One thing. That's it. Simple as that. And they, I, yeah, yeah. Go on. But no, that's what that's what I loved about it. And I thought, um, I just thought it was a great conversation. I want to see Revolt do more of that. I feel Dude, like, uh, can we salute Diddy or the producers, whoever put this together, or what what the idea behind it was? You got to salute Diddy. I mean, he put his that's name his on network. It. Yeah, that's his network. When but I think of the name of the network, Revolt. Yes, I just think that for the next year, because we're, we're in such a weird place right now. And I don't even want to call it weird because it's actually a great time mm -hmm. where hip hop and politics are colliding on a mass pop culture level. Even though hip hop is pop culture, right? But I mean, if you listen to hip hop for years, you've always had your Chuck D's, you've always had your Ice Cubes, you've always had your Killer Mikes, you've always had these guys that talk about social commentary. They talk about things of social redeeming value. They've always talked about political things that's been going on. Like Killer Mike has songs like "Fuck Ronald Reagan." Like they, you've uh, impeached the president, Ice Cube. You've always heard this in the music, mm -hmm. but now. It's like you said. It's 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 being presented in such a digestible way. You know what I'm saying? You gotta give Angela Rye a lot of credit for that too. Angela Rye, whether you agree with her or not, she knows how to talk that language that connects with that hip hop audience. When she's on CNN and she's using hip hop references, it makes it it, it people embrace it in a different way. Ebony K. Williams. She's on State of the Culture with Joe Budden and Remy. Mm. She's an attorney. She knows politics, but she just knows how to put it in a digestible way. Yeah. Killer Mike, super academic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he just yeah. knows how to spit that shit in a, in a digestible way. He's using the language yeah. of the people. They know how to communicate. Yes, yeah, yeah. man. Yes. Was Angela yes. part of that uh, part of that conversation? Nah, it was Tamika Mallory. Uh, what's Katrina's last name? Pearson, I think. Yeah. Thanks. Katrina Pearson. Uh, Killer Mike, T.I., and I cannot remember the other brother's name. I never saw him before that. And who moderated Revolt Summit? It? Jeff Johnson. Salute to Jeff. I was on a plane with Jeff this weekend. Cousin Jeff. Cousin Jeff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, I just thought it was a good conversation, man, because it was just, it, it shows black people aren't monolithic. Dude, we are, we are witnessing a profound time in black American if history, If we're willing to man. listen. Even if it's not, it's like, that conversation right there will be... It could be talked about in history. Did you watch the whole hour, 18 minutes? No, no, I didn't. Did I didn't you watch, watch the whole hour. And, and I will. And no, I will. It's really I'm good. curious it's really in good. it. Uh, I watched several chunks of it, but like that conversation right there could be talked about in history in the same way they talk about, you know, uh, when Lincoln spoke at what, what, what was the the school that they have right there in East Village? Cooper Union. Cooper Union. You know what I mean? Like, like this transition in ideology, this transition, this kind of like removal from like this dogmatic approach to politics that black people have been expected to have for so long, which is I'm black, I'm democratic because the Democrats vote for me. It's like, no, I'm black and I have my issues that I care about. And then whoever the fuck cares about my issues is going to get my vote. By the way, salute to Killer Mike. None of that is new rhetoric. No, no, Mike's been saying this. Dude, but not, not even from yeah, Mike. This from, is Elijah Muhammad. This is Malcolm X. This, this is Marcus Garvey. We've this been saying this on Brilliant Idiots from them. for That's fucking I years. You see I wear on my neck every yeah. day, Elijah Muhammad. Like, that, all of that is old rhetoric. That's why I love Nipsey so much, right? Mm -hmm. Because Nipsey is a new symbol for old values. Because Nipsey... Used to study the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Sure. He used to study Malcolm X. He's the do for self model. He's that guy. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like when people look at him and what he's doing, that's that's been going on. Saying Killer Mike is the same way. He fall, he's fruit off that tree. But everything he said is absolutely right. You free. Act like it. <laughs> like, Make a free decision. Motherfucker, you free. Don't be chained by your ideology. Don't be chained by your identity or anything like that. And say what you want to say about Candace. She opens a door for that. She is very brave. Like, I don't care if you disagree with 99% of her shit. Yeah. The fact that she's willing to say some of it and open a little bit of your mind to a different idea, right? It doesn't mean you're going to go along with everything. But one of those ideas might profoundly change the black experience here in America people, economically. People, people say this all the time. I, I have these conversations with my people all the time behind the scenes. And I always say that if somebody is speaking about the liberation of black people 
which Candace is saying is her ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. Whether it's free your mind from the Democratic Party, whatever. My biggest issue with Candace is that you're telling people to come be Republicans, but for what? Yeah. Because I, I, I'm more with Mike. Yeah, yeah. And I don't give a fuck about either party unless they're doing something specifically for us. Now, if you could tell me what Republicans are doing specifically for us, the Trumpers, then I'll, I'll pay attention I a little bit you. more. I agree with but you. But just telling people to exit the Democratic Party to be Republicans, whatever. But my point is, yeah. if you're speaking about the liberation of black people, I got to listen. Yeah. Regardless if I agree with your course of action, regardless mm -hmm. if I agree with who you support, regardless if, uh, if I agree with who you choose to attack, because I don't like when she comes at the Jamel Hills and the Angela Rise of the world. I don't like, I, I'm not going to say that. I don't like I don't like the way she comes at them. She could do it. If you want to challenge them, challenge yeah. them. When you call them babbling idiots and this and that, whatever, because that's one thing I would never say about Candace. I would never call her an idiot, even if I don't agree with her. You know why? Right. Because I do think she makes a lot of sense sometimes. Right. You know what I'm saying? But your approach could be totally different. Because if your real end goal is to liberate black people... You'll take and Democrat or, or Republican absolutely. or independent, whoever's going to do it. Absolutely. And if, if that person's goal is to liberate black people, as long as y'all got the same end goal, it yeah. don't matter what the course of action you know what, is. You know what I see? Uh, there's She does that on the right, and then there are certain people that do it on the left where they're like dogmatic about their approach to their politics. It's like... It's almost like they're like the environmentalist people. And I don't say this as a joke. You know how like they're so extreme? They're like, we only have 10 more years to switch the environment. <laughs> we need to stop using all plastic things right now. Stop yeah. eating all. And you're just like, dude, that's a little crazy. Like, we're not going to stop using all plastic and stop, you know, eating all chickens and cows. We're not going to do that. Why don't we figure out a reasonable approach to this shit? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where Killer Mike is. Killer Mike is the guy who comes along. He's like, hey, listen, yeah, we're fucking up the environment a little bit. Killer Mike is center everything, bro. Center. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and by the way, that's what you need to be. Like, that's why I say, like, even when it comes to somebody like Elizabeth Warren, I love Elizabeth Warren. I think she's dope. But I just don't think she can capture enough people in the center right. I don't think you can be too far left. I don't think you can be too far right. And if you're being honest and you go look at Barack Obama, Barack Obama was center. On a lot of shit. Yo, he was. And, and you when, know, he went, when he was left, he was like, you might say, okay, legalizing gay marriage is... Left with yeah, yeah, eh, but it's in, it's not really a political issue. It's not a political yeah, issue yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's more yeah, of a moral yeah. thing, if yeah, any, yeah, anything. Yeah. I mean, if you want to look at his war record and shit like that, very conservative. Shit, <laughs> <laughs> drone <laughs> strike. <laughs> Let's go. Shit. <laughs> Just because ain't no goddamn humans dropping them bombs, don't, <laughs> don't mean, mean they're not getting hey, dropped. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it is interesting. I was texting Chris yesterday. And we were just talking about like Chris goes. Uh, Do you think you're going to start hearing Killer Mike for governor? And while I think that he could be great inside of politics, I think Mike's. I, I think what happens is once you become a politician, you're not beholden to just black people. You're beholden to all the people of your district. I think Mike is like that. Yeah, but here's the thing. I think Mike's I think Mike's great service and power right now is to the liberation and like the further progress of black people. And he can't just focus on that if he's working on the whole state. Yo, let me tell you something. The Do you reason, see what I'm saying? Yeah, though? the reason I got so mad at Killer Mike, man, not mad at Killer Mike, mad at the detractors of Killer Mike when they was trying to cancel Killer Mike. Bro, you ain't gonna find nobody blacker. The fuck is wrong with y'all? Yeah. This man is born in Atlanta, Georgia. He owns a barber shop. That's his his yeah. grandmother had him banking black since he was a kid. Yeah. He went to Morehouse. Like, bro, you, you yeah. not gonna find someone blacker. He's been no. owning black owned businesses. He's married a black woman. He raps. He raps. What do you want? Gee, what the fuck? <laughs> He's got killer in his first name. No, Yo, by the way, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how ill killer Mike is too. This is the other thing that y'all not paying attention to. Yeah. Maybe you do. Run the Jewels has quietly been one of the biggest groups in hip hop for years. Yeah. LP is white. Yeah. You go to these Run the Jewels shows, bro. The crowd is so fans. fucking diverse, man. Yeah. And, but it's, re it's majority white people. He connects. You know why? Because we all love radicals. And by the way, Killer Mike's thinking isn't radical to me, but to this bullshit pussy ass generation that we live in, mm -hmm. he's a fucking radical and he's willing to walk through the fire he don't give a fuck That's, why would you care? i always i always look at people who uh i always watch people who respond to their first cancellation and i watch them closely and it's it's an important reaction that they have and i remember we had him here after they tried to cancel absolutely and his reaction to it was great. He didn't back off. He didn't, you know, whimper. He didn't do any apologize or anything like that. It was like a lot of people calling me black need to look at who they lay in bed. You got damn right. No, I married a black, black woman. But, a lot of my critics did not. Yeah, yeah. By the way, Killer Mike, you still have not put that on a t-shirt like a motherfucker told you to. I texted Killer Mike this morning. I said, I said, um, you free. Act like it. 
And I said, yet another slogan you have yet to put on a motherfucking T-shirt. I said, I'm going to have to start doing you like I used to do Duval. Duval, yeah. I used to take Duval shit and just put them on T-shirts and act like I was selling them. <laughs> to, to make him move. He's a great fucking quote. I married a black woman. Most of my critics did not. Fuck you. Mm. How the hell are you going to ever tell me I hate black women, you fuck nigga? <laughs> I'm serious. My wife is black. My daughters are black. I ain't never wanted anything else. Yeah. Fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. mean while you out here with a white man? Yeah. You, yeah. Mar- you, you married to a white woman? If you don't get the fuck out of here, who the fuck are you talking to? So yeah. I, I felt Killer Mike when he said that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he said that shit on stage, you freak, nigga, act like it. Act like it. Woo! That's a bar. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. why it's a bar? Because so many of us, we allow our setbacks to become our identities. Yeah. But. Yeah, yeah, go on that, go on that. But that's, not, that's, that's a period. Dude, we allow your, you allow your setback to become your identity. And, 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 you, and you become so entrenched in one issue that you can't even see the others. Like, here we are right now celebrating a guy who is pro-gun when a week ago, most people listening to this right now are probably, maybe not most people, but a lot of people listening to this, how do we even still have guns? How do we even do that? We got to get rid of all guns, et cetera. You can agree with somebody on one thing and disagree with them on another. And that's okay. That's, that's, and still look up way, to them. That's the way life is. Yeah. Why, it is. why do y'all act like it's any other way? Because these retards want to cancel everybody when they do one thing that they disagree with because they're social currents and currency and cancellation. You're a fucking parasite. All these people that are out there canceling are parasites. There's no such, first of all, there's no such thing as cancel culture. Oh, yeah. We, nobody getting canceled no more. Nobody getting canceled. That shit is a bullshit. Cause mm-hmm. Just because you're mad doesn't mean a person doesn't have the right to exist. Mm hmm. You understand what I'm yes, saying? Yeah. Just because you're mad or disagree with it. It's almost like having real low emotional IQ because you're not able to defend why you are upset. You're not able to defend why you don't agree. If you yeah, don't yeah, agree, yeah, yeah. just state another point. Hey, hey, what about this? What if it's not about them disagreeing? What if it's they validate themselves by getting corporations to bend to their whim? What if these parasites cancel people just because they get an ego stroke of going, watch, I bet I can get bounty paper towels to stop advertising on this show because I expose them. They do it so they can feel good. They don't care about your empowerment. They don't care about the forward progress of your people. They don't care about none of this shit. They care about their own fucking retweets. They're disgusting fucking parasites. Do something. I'm I'm just tired of us. uh, Like it could be a great point, right? A great point can be made. And then a person can say one thing. And we focus on that one thing instead of focusing on the overall point. That's like this Bill Maher, James Corden shit. Yeah, yeah, get into that because I... I watch Bill Maher every week. Hold on, can we pay a bill I can piss and then we and then, then go, we go back to that? I got you. All right. Oh, yeah, with oh, Squarespace. My peoples. Everywhere I go, people are always running up on me saying like, yo, man, I got a website on Squarespace. You know what I'm saying? So salute to Squarespace. They turn your dreams into a reality, okay? Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Whether you're looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, and more, Squarespace is the tool for you. Taylor, you're getting a Squarespace site, right? Because you want to be heard. So I heard that you're getting a, a Squarespace website to launch your own podcast. Okay. Uh, Squarespace has beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks. You can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online and analytics help you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people from designers to lawyers artists to gamers even restaurants and gyms to turn great ideas into something real head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial and when you're ready to launch use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain that's squarespace.com slash idiot offer code idiot you should name your podcast uh, nobody wants to hear me Taylor (laughs) shut up that might pop off for a quick second I'm not even sure if that's the right exercise. It keeps hitting me in my nose. Listen, I agree with Antonio Brown when he said he needed to change these helmets. These helmets are absolutely ridiculous. Are you about to kick us out of here? Only if you can catch me. Guys, NFL season is back, okay? And you know what we're gonna go gamble? We're gonna go gamble at mybookie.com. M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E dot com. All sorts of amazing things. They got this $100,000 handicapping tournament. Only costs $100 to get in. And that's right, you could win $100,000, okay? You want me to get out of here? Stiff arm, no. Okay? 
MyBoogie.com. <laughs> It's got live in-game betting on every single NFL game, okay? And for you fantasy nerds out there, you can bet the over under on fantasy points. I really gotta get a better helmet. Here's the reality, okay? They're gonna match your first deposit up to $1,000. Do you know what that even means? Do you know what that even means? That means you put $1,000 in, they match it. You're gonna gamble all that money. That's only at mybookie.com. M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E.com. You want all that good stuff? You gotta use our promo code. That promo code is idiots. Mybookie.com, promo code is idiots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so James Corden. So yeah, uh, a couple weeks ago, I watch Bill Maher every week. The reason I watch Bill Maher every week because I think Bill Maher is the only motherfucker that's out here telling the truth. Okay, I just really do. Like Bill Maher is out here telling the truth about what's going on with our compromised motherfucking democracy. You know, um, he was talking. This he, he always talks about how we we are normalizing so many things that we shouldn't normalize anymore, especially in in yeah. government. And he was just talking about how Trump was at the point where Trump was just committing crimes in your face now. <laughs> and it's like, Democrats are just like, oh, whatever. Like, they don't even give a fuck no more. Like, he's he's beating them into submission to the point where they're, just, they're like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And I just I just like watching him. But um, he did this about a couple weeks ago. He did this whole uh, rant. And the rant was really about, hold on. It was from a New York Times article. Okay. That's what he was referencing. And the New York Times article was entitled, Our Food is Killing Us. And it was a quote that reads, poor diet is the leading cause of mortality in the United States. Then he listed all of the terrible health conditions that are caused by obesity. Mm -hmm. And he talked about how obesity is a huge part of a health care debate that nobody is, is having. Mm. Right. And he actually said something that we have said. <laughs> on this podcast a million times if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken mm -hmm. the first Brilliant Idiots podcast the Star Shame, shame Enterprise, Enterprise was actually about how shame Sh works I've had plenty of people come up to me and say Charlemagne you shame me into losing weight whatever whatever now by the way I wasn't attempting to shame you mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying but if you have something you know that's about you that you're ashamed of mm. if I say it to you you'll be ashamed, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's the thing with shame, right? The thing with shame is it don't matter if I say it publicly or if I pull you to the side. If you're ashamed about something and I say it to you... That's inside you. It's inside you. You can't be offended by something that you don't feel insecure about. You can't shame me if I don't got no fucking shame. That's it. I don't give a shit. I've been talking with a list for 30 years. <laughs> you can say whatever list joke you got. Yeah, I don't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you can say whatever about me. I don't, I, I, it don't bother me yeah. if, if it... Don't bother me. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. And the thing about being fat or obese, whatever, that's something you can actually change. Yeah. And people like to say, oh, what about people who are sick and they have disease? We're not talking about them. Yo, We're talking about you eating fucking dumplings all day. Majority of yeah. the people in America who are fat are fat because of overeating that's and it. lack of exercise. That is a fact. You can argue with me to the cows come home. There's nowhere you're going to read That's that it. doesn't tell you otherwise. I've never so, met a fat person that works out more than me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, never once. Exactly. I've never met one. So the problem with Bill Maher is he's a political pundit who yeah. actually also happens to be a comedian. Yeah. So when you're giving people this medicine, you throw a little candy in it. Yes. And even though it's truth and jokes, yes. when he says fat shaming works... I don't think I think he's looking at it the same, and I can I can't speak for him. I'm just saying that's the way we also look at it, right? Because that is what it's called, right? If I tell somebody, "Yo, you fat, lose some weight," they'll say, "Stop shaming him." I'm not though. I'm just telling that person, "Yo, mm -hmm. lose some weight. You want to be here, right? You mm -hmm. don't have a heart attack, high whatever." Yeah. So I'm not doing it on purpose. So I think when Bill Maher was saying that, that's what he was saying. He's not saying go around and just be teasing fat people right. for the sake of teasing fat people. He's just telling them, yo, if they big, let them know. Yeah. If they're obese, let them know. Like, you encourage them to get into shape. Yeah, yeah. James Corden. Nobody ever lost weight because of compliments. Yes. And James Corden said, I have nothing but respect for Maher. I think he's terrific. I watched his show last night. Uh, but he said, what he said, what did James Corden actually, he said fat shaming. Oh, Bill Maher said fat shaming doesn't need to end and needs to make a comeback. And James Corden basically said, Fat shaming is wrong. And he all I'm saying is he made it all about fat shaming. He made it all about fat shaming, but this whole conversation was bigger than fat shaming. Mm. But being that we're only focusing on this, the, the one line Mar said about fat shaming, we're dismissing everything else mm. about obesity and healthcare yeah. and overeating and lack of exercise. Yeah. Like we get so distracted. You know what I mean? We're not distracted. He's, he's been a parasite. You, you think he's just responding? He's parasiting, man. Mm. That's all he's doing. He's finding a bite. 
that he can use to virtue signal on. And then he can, you know, pat himself on the back and all his followers can be like, oh my God, you're so good. You're so right. Look how evil that person was. You shine some light on how evil they were. Parasite behavior, dude. Parasite, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not mad at James Corden for his opinion. You know what I'm saying? He has the right to his opinion. I am, because you enable people being fat as fuck. And that's an unhealthy thing. It is an unhealthy thing. Would you let your kids be obese? I would would have liked for him to have that conversation about Bill Maher. Here's the thing. I have no problem with you pushing back on the fat shaming thing if you equally big up all the, the things that you agree with that he said. Yes. Because you did, James did say he's right. Obesity is a real thing and lack of exercise and people are dying because of obesity. But big that up just as much yeah. as you make a point about the fat shaming. Yeah. Thing. You can tell Bill Mario, you can do all of that without encouraging fat shaming. Whatever. Yeah. But just big up the good and what Bill Maher said yeah. as much as you big up what you de- deem as negative. Yeah. You know, it's tricky with the show like that with Bill Maher because he's a comedian, but he is serious. Yes. And I think you get into trouble there because it's like, well, you can't just be a comedian the second motherfuckers give you pushback and then all the other stuff you say that's serious, you go, no, that's, I meant to me, I meant that all of that. Yeah. You know, and I think that's where a lot of comics, like, is. I think it's tough for comics and most people in general just to be content and just be entertainment. But just because it's a joke doesn't mean that it's false. Absolutely. Joke just just means intention. Yes, but if he only did jokes, he could joke about that all he want and and that's totally fine. But the fact that the beginning was serious and he was giving these serious points, it's almost like he's using the comedy as like a way to get out of jail free. That's why I like Bill Maher. And that's cool. That's why I love, I think Bill Maher's the best host on television. Who's not Stephen Colbert. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But yeah, Steven yeah. does something totally different. Right. There's nobody I like to... The only other person I used to like to hear that did what Mar did was John Stewart. Yeah, John was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mar is... Mar and, that's why I think Mar has Killer Mike on his show all the time. Because he gets it. Mar is center. Yeah. As much as people act like Mar is left-leaning, no, Mar, Mar is center. Well, Mar criticizes yeah. the left just as much as he considers the right. Yeah. It's just that right now, the right needs a lot more criticism. Right, And but he's also heavy on the left. Like, he's heavy on the criticism the left needs right now, too. He hates... The, listen, yeah. he, he thinks the left is responsible for the pussyfication of society. Yeah. All this cancel culture shit, y'all. He he calls the left a a a, a, a shooting uh, a circle of shooters. What do they call it? Shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shooter. Huh? You fucking racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> calls but basically, shooting. If everybody's it's, shooting each other in a circle, everyone's dead. Not a circle jerk, a, a, fi- a circular firing squad. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, it yeah. Is. So everybody's killing. Everybody's each other. in a circle. Yeah, everybody's yeah. shooting at each other. You end up killing each other, canceling each other out. That's yeah. what the fuck it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he's just as hard on them as he is on the right. But I just like him because I feel like there's nobody out there that's stating the obvious more than motherfucking Bill Maher. Yeah. And he's like, yo, y'all focus on such trivial shit. Like, I really don't care if Donald Trump tells somebody to go back to their fucking country. Right. I care about the legislation Donald Trump is implementing that might really send you back to your fucking country. Yeah. (laughs) We got to start dismantling systems. Yeah. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about the little colorful language that's used here and there. Yeah, but systems don't get retweets, bro. What gets a retweet is calling someone an asshole for what they said. Well, I'm and not we know the, that. I'm not in the retweets. I'm in the actual work. Now we're talking. You know what I'm saying? And building systems takes time. Dismantling systems take time. And they both take hard work to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true, man. It's it's true. I keep hard, I keep thinking about what, you're, what we were saying before, just about you just need one thing in common with somebody. That's it. There's this, uh, God, it's so true, man. And we're really, if we can have one thing in common, anybody can get along. Anybody can have a good time. That's it. I was doing this. Why do we do that? Why do we, why do we, (sighs) why do we get around each other and figure out all the reasons we don't like something? Bro, you know what I realized, (laughs) dude? I I, I was at, I was at uh, New York Comedy Club. Shout out to New York Comedy, a great comedy club in New York City here. And, um. I was doing this uh, Schultz and Friends show that I, that I do every once in a while. There. And uh, I put the clip up on my YouTube this week. And I was basically, there was a bunch of Muslims in the crowd. And there was a bunch of Jews in the crowd. And I was just doing Muslim and Jew jokes. And they were both laughing at themselves. And they were laughing at each other. Mm-hmm. And here are these two groups that like the world is pitted against each other. And they think they can't get along. And instead of comedy dividing, right? It's really comedy uniting. and then. Everybody's having a fucking good time and having a sense of humor. Why? Because in that moment, they just agreed to have one thing in common. They agreed yeah. that they were going to laugh. They're going to laugh. That they're going to laugh. They weren't going to be sensitive. They weren't going to be offended, and they were going to fucking laugh. 
And it's just crazy. You just need one fucking thing. You need one fucking thing. Just, bro. So why isn't that the state of political discourse? Why is the state of political discourse like how separate we are? Yeah. Why don't Republicans and Democrats extend the olive branch? Instead of like shitting all over the competition, why don't they be like, hey, don't you agree on this? Well, why don't... Why don't you come fuck with us? Because yeah, we both agree absolutely. on that thing. Like what is, maybe it's up to like us to decide what we find most valuable. What do you find most valuable as Charlemagne the God? What do I find most valuable as Andrew Schultz? And then just vote that. I like funny and I like love. Yeah. I'm being honest. Like, that's what I like. I like, I like laughing. So if you make me laugh, bro. Yeah. And I like inappropriate laughter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the people, people that know me know that. Yeah. That's why I'm not even going to repeat some of the jokes I heard at Elvis' wedding. <laughs> because context matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, <laughs> it does matter. And, like, there's this there's this SNL controversy. Obviously, you heard about the SNL controversy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. should check in with our Asian correspondent about that. Chris, what, Chris. what did you feel about the... Uh... You're going to make me speak for Asians here? I mean, you're the closest we got. So the controversy you is... You're going to make me buy bottles for Jack H. Hines. <laughs> That's, what That's what Chris sounded like he was about to say. You're going to make me You're gonna make me buy bottles for Jack H. Hines. Is that an actual lyric? <laughs> I hope so. Because <laughs> we're going to have to cancel whoever... Uh, you about to get... Yo, Asian Twitter going to yeah. come for you, bro. You I can can't buy bottles for Jack H. Hines. Asian Twitter coming, bro. My cosign is not so, going to be worth too much to you, man. So um, <laughs> so just to set everybody up, there's a, SNL hired three new cast members um uh one a girl i forget her name uh Bo bowen yang is the uh who i think was a writer last season now he's a full-time cast member i'm assuming he's the asian one he's the asian okay. yang. and then shane gillis who's uh you know first time being involved in the show What's the outreach and a clip came up from a podcast that shane was doing where he was making fun of asians in chinatown he used a derogatory word for chinese people right one that rhymes with uh sink I think you know which one it is, right? Mm -mm. And which uh, one is it? Uh, rhymes with blink. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, you could say rest in peace, Chink's Drugs. Ah, Chink's Drugs, exactly. That was his name. Or this armor. There was a chink in the armor. There you right, go. Exactly. Yeah, but by the way, you can say that because you're not saying, I know, you're I not know. calling I'm them. You're I'm just, teasing. I'm yeah, teasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, uh, and, and the thing about what was happening on the, um, the 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 podcast is that like it wasn't really a joke being told it was just kind of like shit that was inappropriate being said about Asians right so whereas like because I was asking you know Asian comics and their friends their take on it and most of the times a comic responds like this they're like listen I'm a comic first in a lot of ways so usually I'll look at the com the comedy and then I look at you know, the substance afterwards, right? And this situation really wasn't a joke. It was just kind of like, just kind of derogatory shit said, right? Um, so people, you know, were tweeting that out and there's this big outrage and fucking the Post is writing about it. And what happens is a narrative gets set. Yeah, what's up? Who gives a fuck? Asians. But he's Asian. No, 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 no Shane no, is an Asian. no, no. no. Oh, well, Shane, you on your own. I thought you were talking, <laughs> talking about the Yang guy. So, so Ari Shafir said an interesting thing. Comic Ari Shafir, very, very funny guy. Um, and he said, he's like, listen, if you hear anybody, any comic, sorry, if you hear any comic say anything racist or insensitive on a podcast that he know is be, knows is being recorded, he is doing it to be funny. Duh. He is doing it for content. And that is not how he feels. Right. And I think that that goes beyond just comics. Like you and I have said horrific things on this very podcast. Absolutely. But it's never in the guise of being horrific. It's in the guise of entertainment. Have we failed? Yes. Yes. Hundreds of times. And by the way, we Thousands. weren't even trying to be entertaining. We just being ourselves. Yeah, we just being stupid. So we just got some fucked up views sometimes. And we fucked up. Yeah. That being said, it's in, in the guise of entertainment. Yeah. And if we're talking to a fucking professor, a politician, we would word it in a different way. Maybe not. I think. In eh, I've made a living off it. That's the only reason these presidential candidates' videos go far. I don't know how to talk to these people in fair a enough, fair different enough, fair way. Enough. That's fair. That's fair. I guess what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, it's, a, it's a tricky thing, but what happens is after an agenda is set, they started going through all of Shane's podcasts and everything he ever said and trying to find other bites that confirm this anti-Asian narrative. gives a shit? And I'm gonna tell you, no, I'm not going to say anti-Asian narrative because... If there's a history of 
I guess anti Asian rhetoric, then there's probably something there. No, but here's the thing: they can create a narrative. Oh uh, yeah, you know more than I anybody. Know that, yes. So what they do is they go through your entire history and then find the little things throughout history yes. that could fulfill the narrative. Yes. So they're starting to do that with him. And there was like this this article that he was being referenced in where he was basically saying that, and the, the thing that they take out is he goes, uh, you know, you can make fun of Asians and then the audience laughs. They don't, they think it's okay or something like that. And they cut out the context of it, which is how hypocritical is that, that there's one group that you can just make fun of and other groups you can't make fun of. But again, that context isn't good. The context isn't good for the narrative that's set, which is, oh my God, this guy hates Asians so much. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a tricky thing with comedy. It's And this is the hardest thing to defend because what he said in the podcast wasn't funny at all. That's right? the problem. It's not. If it was funny, then as comics, we're like, dude, this is a joke. You don't get the joke. With the Dina Hashem girl, when she did the joke about XXX, at least it was funny. At least there was a mm -hmm. comedic context to it. When there's no comedic context to it, you can't go, well, I'm it a comedian. Decent. It was... There I like the premise. There was a bait and switch. Yeah, you I could like say the, the execution wasn't as good yeah, as you yeah, wanted, yeah, yeah, but yeah. The, you could at least go that was an intended joke. Yeah, 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 that yeah. was written Absolutely. for the intent of humor, Absolutely. whereas this one wasn't, and that's where it's the worst thing because it's so fucking hard. That's to the worst part about podcasts, though. Hundred percent. Because on stage, your structure, you have the setup, you've built this joke out. Podcast, we just talking, we just kicking shit, son. And you know what, Patrice O'Neill said this uh, the best. He goes, an unfunny joke and a funny joke start in the same place. Yeah. They start in the exact... We don't know. And by the way, most funny jokes probably didn't start off as they funny. They start unfunny. Yeah. Should I know? Because it's a premise. That, and you're building it out. You're building it out. You're building it out. You're building it out. And next thing you know, you got this great bit that's that, like, oh, okay. Yeah. It starts bombing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. are people I'm sure have seen me start with a joke that bombed and then eventually see me again and seen that joke change and then been like, holy fuck. Like, you can't start with, white people are buying pit bulls <laughs> now. You gotta build. You gotta build up to that one, right? I'm sure. When by the way, I've seen Damon tell that joke again. Yeah, and it was great. It, it was great. But in that moment, eight years ready. ago at the garden, nah, man, he took that shit out the oven too fast. Mm -hmm. you been into it. It was still cold. You tried to warm it up, bro. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't ready. Wasn't ready. Middle still frozen. The middle still frozen, man. Yeah. That's all. You just gotta build it out. But on podcast, you don't get to do that because podcasts are really just your first thought, your premise. I'm reading this. I'm reading Ryan Holiday's new book called "Stillness Is the Key," and he talks about thinking deeply. Mm. And he says how hard it is to think deeply, especially in this era, because we always want to throw our first thought out there. And that's why a lot of these tweets and shit get us in trouble because it ain't supposed to be like that. Uh. It's supposed to be. I got a thought. That's why a lot of times I hit the group chat. Yeah. I'll call you. What let's, is it? Yeah, let's yeah, flesh yeah, this yeah, out yeah, yeah, yeah. before I bring this to the masses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And give it to them. Like that's why I enjoy the class. Why I enjoy talking to you. I enjoy talking to Banner. Anyway, yeah, yeah. we, we enjoy talking to Andrew. We're, flesh, we're fleshing things out. Yeah, talking yeah, to my yeah. wife. We fleshing things what out. What am I missing here? Often yes. when I throw, like when I say some salacious shit in in the group text, I'm saying it purposely to trigger. So I can see what I'm missing. You want to see all sides. I know that Van or you is going to come with an angle I didn't see. And if you guys don't, then I'm like, oh shit, maybe I'm on to something and maybe it's good. But if you guys do, now I at least know the reaction. Yes. I know what I'm up against. Yes. I'm not surprised when I get that yes. reaction because, okay, I've seen it and the, I can prepare for the that. The dumbest shit people ever told us was don't overthink things. That's bullshit. <laughs> you should overthink things. Overthink what you say. I think you should overthink things, period. Don't overthink shit you're not going to act on. There's no reason, to, there's no point in sitting that's there and no, overthinking. That's very true. That can kill you. No, but shit that true. you want to stand behind and yes. you want to talk about. things you want to do. Shit. Overthink. Yeah, overthink it. Yeah. Figure it out. And then, by the way, figure it out. And you may not, you may not even get it right after overthinking it, but at least you gave it a lot of thought. Give you're able thought. to live with it more mm -hmm. if it doesn't go right. If you know, I really, really gave it some thought. Yeah. I prayed on it. This is what I came to the conclusion about. I did my best. Yes. It's like when yes. you lose a fight, but you know you trained so fucking hard, there was nothing else you could do. Yes. You, you can't feel that bad. You're still going to be disappointed. But you gave it everything. You gave it everything. But when you go out there with like a half-baked premise. Oh, it's the worst. It's like, that's on me. That's my bad. I fucked that yes. up. Yes. And I'm guaranteed that's what Shane got to be thinking right now. It's like, man. Like, because Shane's a funny comic. And he's like, that was not representative of me as a comic at all. You went and got my worst work. My wor It wasn't even work. And you just got me, me being fucking un funny and I am funny the kid is funny I'll yeah. tell you that and it's like and that's the thing that I'm going to be judged on that's what happened with the rape culture conversation we was having here on the podcast yes because pe people can say whatever they want but 
years ago, before it was the, I don't want to say trendy, but the trendy thing to do, Brilliant Idiots was ahead of the curve, mm-hmm. and we were having these conversations about rape and rape culture and what is rape culture and questioning a lot of things that we And did. how big certain shit is yes, and question, how fucked yes. up our behavior we was. was. questioning a lot of our bullshit behavior from yeah. the past, questioning the gray areas, yada, yada, yada. And speaking in a way where we speak. But, but, but think about it. We were trying, we were figuring, those are conversations we should have been having amongst each other. So once we did bring it to the masses, we had a better understanding. But we were yeah. working it out in real time mm-hmm. on these podcasts. Which is what we always do. Which is what we always and do. And that's why it's interesting because, you know what? We're fleshing out these ideas that everybody listening also has. Yes. So they're like, the people that listen, you guys, I'm sure you get this all the time. They're like, yeah, I just feel like I'm in on a conversation. Because it is one. Yes. This is not structured. Every single week, Taylor brings in five pieces of paper that have topics on it. And we never we look. We don't use none of them. Uh, That's useless. <laughs> Matter of fact, we, we did one today. The, we don't know. She typed. We at, really did one. Listen, everybody watching at home, I just want to let you know. She had to type all this. This is typed. Yes. Every week, it's tons of these papers. We did this one. That's the Bill Maher James card. I, I don't ever... Do you ever even look at it? She hands it to me, and then I put it right in the garbage, right over here. Every single week. Nah, some good ones on here today, though. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is. The, t- the Tebow draws national criticism after saying collegiate athletes shouldn't be paid. He needs to, he needs to shut the fuck up forever. Uh, Felicity Huffman sentenced to 14 days. Eh. No Emmy for Beyonce. I eh. don't care about that. Life Jennings calls out CTG for joking on his song. I eh. don't care about that. Kim K says CBD saved her life. I agree. Say I love CBD. Hmm. It helps me sleep. Yeah, now, do you think that's her setting up a CBD line? Absolutely. 100%, right? 1,000%. Shorty does not play around. She knows exactly. Just like when, Dwayne, when Drake starts tweeting, you know he got the album or some singles coming out. This is her version of that. Well, I just want the record to show that my favorite CBD line is Green Roads. Um, those are the products that I like to use. Uh, I think they're a great company. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Green Roads. Yeah, Green Roads is great. I use the gummies. I use the syrup. I do the drops under my tongue. Mm. It helps my anxiety. It helps me to sleep. I take it with me when I travel. It, it, I, I fuck with CBD. I put CBD on my joints after I work out. I fuck. I can't speak for all CBD products, yep. but that Green Road shit, that That's shit works for me. You got to bring some for me. Oh, I, absolutely. Yeah. They send me, I got boxes of that shit. Yeah, give me some. I want to try that yeah, shit. Yeah, I fuck with Green Roads. Actually, and, uh, when Dr. Oz was on, Dr. Oz uh, was talking about one of the studies that they did on these CBD companies. And a lot of these com- CBD companies don't really have CBD in them. Yeah, they're fake. They're just advertising it. Yeah, yeah. Green Roads is not one of those companies. They Green actually Rose, got the real oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Green Roads is A1. I mean, this is, this is the real way that you make billions of dollars. Because, like, selling marijuana is a limited market, right? You can't sell marijuana to kids. You can't sell marijuana to adults. And it's always going to have, like, I mean, you can't to adults, but, like, old people and shit mm-hmm. like that. It's gonna be, always going to be scrutinized mm-hmm. and just have a little bit of a taboo thing attached to it. But if CBD isn't a drug and CBD could just help you and CBD is non habit forming and CBD doesn't, yes. you know, it's have any happening. lasting effects. That's why all you no, no, I know. I'm saying, like, the question is when is Johnson and Johnson going to start selling? Oh, CBD? they own it. When is yo? Did you know Pfizer? that? Well, they got to make weed legal for us. Marijuana got to be legal in no, but no, no CBD. Legal, He's like, when is Johnson legal? and Johnson going to do CBD? CBD's not legal. Sure oh, it's it not. It's not illegal. But uh, it's the same thing. They don't know how to regulate it yeah. uh, as far as the it's not like my, my food co-op has it, but it's in a sealed case and you have to get somebody to open the case, which doesn't make any sense to me. What I'm saying is that's the real money maker because that's the difference because marijuana right. is always going to be looked at a drug just like alcohol always going to be looked at a drug. I don't think marijuana, drug. and I think in 50 years it's going to be the same as alcohol. I think even, yeah, but, but here's the thing. Less than water gets purchased a lot more than Heineken. They got CBD water too. That's what I'm saying. So CBD can be the non-alcoholic version of alcohol. Do you know what I mean? C- CBD sure, can be the water. But I, I don't want to see Johnson & Johnson gobble it up because I think a lot of people have been doing good work in the space, but there is a situation also where it is unregulated, and a lot of it, frankly, out there is bullshit. Like, you know, bullshit. When you go to the Greg's Coffee in New York, they're like, do you want a CBD shot in your... So you know damn well you ain't got no fucking CBD I don't know what the there. fuck that is. There are CBD certain brands. They put a CBD in Green coffee. Road sounds like it's one of them. Green Road is great. Charlotte's Web is definitely one of them. I mean, there are certain One of my brands. favorite books. Really? Solid book. Never read it. Love Sh- what? Never read it. You're a psychopath. Well, maybe, Wilbur? but I don't know if it's Wilbur and that. Charlotte was great. Did you say you're a pig? Oh. I'm like, Jesus Christ, bitch, you're not getting that fat. Listen, what you were saying, Chris? I was just saying that uh, there's going to be a constriction and it's going to unfortunately get gobbled up. But I think it's the same thing. I mean, I think you'll see big tobacco 
gradually ease out tobacco and replace it with marijuana. I was we, when, when I did the thing uh, when I moderated the panel uh, Friday at the Congressional Black Caucus thing, and it was about you know can cannabis license be used as reparations? And you know you'll see so many of these digital dickheads. The first thing they say when you post something like that is, "Yo." All black people don't smoke, and this is some racist shit, and yada, yada, yada. As if there's not a million other ways to use marijuana. You got CBD. You got hemp. You know what I'm saying? You, you, right. hemp, you can make clothes out of hemp and rope, all types of different shit. It's all type of different uses of the marijuana right. plant. THC does one thing. CBD does one thing. The hemp does another thing. Like, it's so many different ways to use the motherfucking marijuana plant. That's how it plant. was introduced to America. I mean, you know, George Washington grew hemp. You know, it was a staple crop for a long time. It wasn't really until black people started smoking it that it became a problem. To yeah, tell the truth. I'm going to be honest with you. That cherry tree shit is pussy now. In order for, like, you got to have George, George Washington chopped down the marijuana tree, my G. You know what I'm saying? That cherry tree shit is some bullshit. Because, first of all, I ain't never seen a cherry tree. I didn't know cherries came on trees. Me neither. Yeah. You ever seen a cherry tree? Sure. I ain't never seen no motherfucking cherry tree. No. It's so crazy that when you think cherries, you think pussies. <laughs> like I, You do? Like yes. popping a cherry? Yes. Ah. You don't think of a fruit? When the last time you referenced a cherry as an actual cherry? Uh, no, I, I do. Really? Yeah. That's usually what I think about. Really? When someone's like, yo, let's go eat some cherries. I don't think it's a Yeah, you never told somebody let's go eat some cherries. Me and my boy sharing a bag of cherries. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if your buddy was like, dude, I had some like I had some cherries last night, you think he was just eating hymens? No, nah, not in saying it. <laughs> <laughs> not saying it like that, but you always say in reference to something. Oh, you, you popped your cherry, right? You I don't think I'm pop? popping a cherry. In, yeah, into my yeah. mouth. If, if I hear pop a cherry, it's the first time I'm doing something. Maybe having yeah, sex. With you. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever popped a cherry. You never took a girl's virginity. I have, but I oh. think their cherry got popped through like gymnastics or equestrian. Oh, you never broke that hymen. I don't think I broke that hymen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get yeah. it. I get it. Yeah. No, you could bust your hymen doing gymnastics or equestrian. I've definitely broken a couple of hymens in my day. Really? Very overrated experience. I bet. Never want to say. I never it's want to blood sleep with everywhere, a right? First of all, I two reasons I never want to sleep with a virgin. Number one, I know I'm not going to be with you for the rest of my life, so why would right. I do that to you? Yeah. Right? And number two, it's just like, I. I need experience, especially when you're young. Like, hey, yeah, give me a whore, bro. Yeah, I'm with you on that. You know what I'm bro. saying? I want a, I want a woman that's done it a few times. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I know when I took got my virginity taken, a woman that took my virginity was already having sex. Yes, so I probably was whack to her too. Somebody got to know what they're doing. Somebody got to yeah. know what the fuck they doing. Yeah, yeah. Virginia overrated. Yeah, man. Overrated. Yeah, man. Don't let the don't let the Muslims fool you when they say they're gonna bomb something and they get ten virgins. Well, you don't want none of that, bro. Nah. dude. Give you three horse over seventy two virgins, three horse for the afterlife. What would you rather? It's a good question. Three horse, seventy two virgins. Three horse. Depends where I'm at. Heaven. Three horse. Three horse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three of them. If I'm in hell, I'm taking the 72 virgins. Why? I want more company. There's nobody down there. So we have that shit popping. Yo, this idea you know that I'm there's saying? nobody there. <laughs> Charlotte, we're going to get a rude awakening. <laughs> three of us Yo. down in heaven. Golden State Warriors numbers, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yo, pop it. It's just going to be me, you, and Van Beck. That group text was a motherfucker. Huh? It's just a perfect. That's it? Really? Nobody else had group text? Really, God? God? No, just, really? God, you telling me the group chat didn't slap? <laughs> oh, but you read it, though. you knew our heart. Oh, oh, but you read it. That's why we're here, because someone was going through it all. Oh, like, you no. was okay with it then. Be like, God, I thought you knew our heart. God's like I do and I know that you didn't really trust the group chat so you didn't put what you was really thinking in there <laughs> that's what the fuck happened alright guys um, I think we're done anything else I think that's it baby alright uh, as always if you listen to this podcast you think we're smart you think we're intelligent Yo, you think you, we're brilliant can we at the end of every podcast go through the topics we didn't cover that, let's do it that, that Taylor the Taylor the Taylor Taylor listed. So we'll go through everything that she said. T Bow draws national security, not touching it. No Emmy for Beyonce, not touching it. Felicia. No, T Bow's a dickhead. He is. And I don't even think that he knows that he's being a dickhead. I just think that he's a privileged person who doesn't understand the circumstances that some people come from because he may have been playing football for the love. Well, motherfuckers playing for money. That, yo, they trying to change their circumstances. And by the way, if you want it to be so much for the love, well, tell the colleges to stop charging admission for games. Mm -hmm. Tell the colleges to stop 
charging for merchandise. Mm-hmm. Tell the colleges to stop charging people for concessions. Tell the colleges to stop doing licensing deals with video games. It's like it's, TV a, it's, it, it's TV revenue. It's a billion dollar business. I'm yeah. not gonna. How can you? How can you justify making billions of dollars in something and, not and telling this person, hey man, do it for the love? Uh, yeah, I mean, Tebow's an idiot. You Listen, know what I mean? Give me a percentage of my jersey sales. What's wrong with that? Yeah. If you're gonna use me in a video game, use my likeness in a video game. Like who gives a fuck? Imagine Zion Winston that went to Duke, made that school all that fucking money, got yeah. hurt. And never went to the NBA. Now you're just sitting in South Carolina getting fat because you know he would get fat with an injury. Oh, All right? <laughs> okay. He's ready to go. Exactly. So you're just sitting in South Carolina getting fat. You don't got nothing to show for it mm. except for a fucking jersey nah. that don't even got your name on the back. I love it. Let California them college thing. motherfuckers get paid, man. Dude, it's 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 a brilliant thing that they're doing. This is what we were suggesting on Flagrant 2, which was let them make money on their likeness. That's it. The colleges don't even got to pay them. You're just letting them make money on their likeness. So now the colleges, you don't got to share any of your money, you cheap motherfuckers. But what, what you can't do is allow these kids to not starve and actually they'll stay in school longer because some of them ain't gonna make it in the NBA. Yo, that, yo, I said that this morning on the radio. It's like the incentive is if I can make millions of dollars in college. I might as well stay for four years. Might as well be here for the full fucking four, especially if I'm not gonna be a top 10 I know I'm, I'm gonna be a second round, round pick. pick. Why fuck the fuck that? Not? Or I can make 250 grand a year with the sponsorship man. from Home Depot Come or whatever on, they give me. Come on. Come no, on, that's man. this is this is gonna make, in my opinion, this is gonna make college sports Un- it revitalizes real. the Re- NCAA, especially the Completely. NCAA basketball. Kids NCAA aren't going to go overseas. Be so about this. Yes, they're not going to go overseas. They're not going to come in for one year and be mm-hmm. out. They're going to stack this mother and fucking bread up. By the time they get to the NBA. Guess what? This is why the NBA should be all about it. By the time they get to the NBA, they had four years of the marketing machine that is the NCAA. They're more mature. They, they're, the game they is to, ready. They, they know how to manage they their money. They, they, the they, they learn how to manage yeah. their yes. money. They learn how to manage their money. And they're famous. Yes. Let's think about how famous Zion got from one year. Imagine four years or at least two or three years playing for Duke. Making legit money, Absolutely. getting your game legit right. These kids will come out of school, and they're not going to just be like, you know, uh, what is it, uh, crash and burn stories that you hear constantly. Imagine how famous you get when I invest in you. Meaning, like, oh. when I buy your jersey, oh. when I buy your Williamson jersey, I'm wearing this everywhere. Mm-hmm. So now I'm making you larger than life. I don't wear no college jerseys. Why? Because there ain't no fucking names on the back. It's just numbers. <laughs> it's just fucking it's numbers. It's just numbers. Yeah, I remember when... I remember Damn, when, Taylor, you got to recommend more stories. It's pretty good. I remember when Allen Iverson played in Georgetown. We wanted that number three Hoyer. <laughs> yeah. Because it was so synonymous with Allen Iverson. That's true. I can't think of too many college... I can't think of too many college players who were, 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 who, who made their jerseys larger than life. I can't think of many, bro. Allen Iverson is the only one that I can think of off the top of my head. College what? players that made their jerseys. I mean, what Taylor? Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> yeah, I can't think of nobody but Allen Iverson, bro. In my in my lifetime, I can't either. In my lifetime, but yeah, T. Boy, and I'm listen, I'm not even mad at T. Boy for what he said. He had the right to say whatever the fuck he wanted to say. But it's just like yo, you're being for you to be a Christian, you're being very selfish. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Dude, here's one thing. Then we get out of here. But this Felicity Huffman shit where she only got sentenced for 14 days. This is so, this is the woman who paid for her daughters to, you know, get the SATs faked and like basically game the system to get into uh, USC. Was it Chris? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. So this is what's so funny about this to me is for years, Wealthy families have been buying libraries and donating land to these universities so that their kids get in with lackluster grades. Yeah. For years, this is going on. The Bushes, all these libraries named after some rich family in Absolutely. a school were donated so that their legacy can continue to go to school. Matter of fact, the schools even have a term for it. It's called legacy, meaning if your fa- parents went to the school you have easier access into the school because the assumption is whatever you're part of that tradition, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. So the reason Felicity Huffman is going to jail is because she tried to do it the cheap way. She the tried school, to cut out the middleman. She tried to cut out the middle. The school's yeah. like, yo, we got a policy, motherfucker. Build a library. You get your dumb kids in or be smart and get into the school. You tried to go around the system, so you got to get locked the fuck up. How fucking hypocritical. How can the school go, this is wrong? It's not wrong. This is how your fucking institution it's, it's is built. It's, I think it, it would be a legit criticism if it was a public institution. Yeah, 100%. But a private, a private one be? institution, they can do. So a lot of people are making the comparison between the woman who was sent to jail, I think, for five years for trying Horrible. to. Horrible. That's total bullshit. You're trying to get a better education for your kid. The worst thing that should happen is they take your kid out of the school. That's it. The, absolutely. I'll tell you right now. 
I was trying to pull that shit to get my kid into a better public school. Everybody does. Everybody that's, in my school did everybody it. Everybody does. Use your that's work, e- game. work address. To, yeah. to send somebody to jail for that is outrageous. But to me, what Hoffman did is, you're, you're right, she just fucked up trying to game the system. She, she tried to take a shortcut. Now, if she had done that at UCLA, I think it's a different story because UCLA is a public institution. And then she's stealing public money. But I'm kind of like, yo, if you do it at a private, it's the college is bullshit for acting outrage because they do it. At, their entire, uh, you know, financial wealth is based on shaking down rich people right. for admissions. It's, it's it's a lot of hypocrisy on that. No it's doubt. complete bullshit. Yeah. And the, the, the fact she only got 14 days. Look, man, paper and privilege, baby. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> paper and fucking privilege. If she got the money to spend on a goddamn school. How much you think she got to give to a motherfucking lawyer to get her to fuck off? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nice. What the fuck is you talking about? Maybe if she doubled up that money, she could have got her kid in the school no problem. Why the fuck would you want to send your dumb ass? Why would you pay to send your dumb ass kid to school anyway? Bro, you know what the you saddest... You want to talk about a bubble that's going to pop. Oh, no, the school thing done. But you know what the saddest shit about all this is, though? Is these kids end up going to these schools that they're cheating to get into and doing fine. Sure. So what does that tell us? That you don't need good grades to be successful in these schools. Everybody I ever met that went to Harvard has told me way harder to get in than actually do the work there. Sure. All it is is creating a border, if you will, for a very privileged society where you can build up these connections to do things in the real world. Doing Algebra is algebra at the end of the fucking day. It's like you can't really make the math problem that much harder. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of classes <clears throat> at Harvard that are, you know, more difficult than the classes. Swiss Beats told me that the class he learned the most from at Harvard was the class that was a three week course. Right. Did them courses that took a couple years and all that shit. <laughs> yeah. He didn't learn nothing. Mm-hmm. What he said, the classes that had the three week course, he just learned more from it. And those are the things that he utilizes right now. Well, that's the thing. When you go to an institution like that, you're going there for the the connections. Right. Yeah. Like the same thing when you get a master's degree, right? It's not only the information that you learn. It's the network that you're now a part of. It's you need a job in finance. You can go to that teacher that you worked at a finance with, and he has all these connections in the financial world, and he can get you, a, at the bare minimum, a meeting about a job. And is that worth $200,000? Maybe. Maybe it is. I don't maybe think it, it is. will be going forward. Maybe not forward, but maybe yeah. it, maybe it's not. College right now, $200,000 to have no degree that gets you an actual job? I'm sorry, buddy. I already told my kids, I was like, if, if college is important to you, you're going to have to start thinking about a scholarship because I'm not coming out of pocket for this. This is the least Why? Asian thing you've ever said. Least. <laughs> this Why? is the least Asian thing you have ever Why? said on this very podcast. I, I, I look I don't, forward. I don't, I, look, I don't think it's a smart investment, to be perfectly honest with wow. you going forward. I, I, think, I think if you could get into the Stanfords and Harvards and Yales because of the things that Andrew just mentioned, it's a smart investment to get into the type of college I went to. I think you can network Not anywhere, though. I don't agree with that. I think I understand what Andrew's saying, but you can network at any of these places. And, like, you don't, you never know where the next big tech guy is going to come from. You never know where the next head of a Fortune 500 company is going to come from. You never know where the next senator is going to come from. Like, That's 100% true. But being in part of these institutions allows you access to, like, VC funding. So, for <laughs> example, like, when you're a Harvard guy, you're a Yale guy or something like that, you have this network that you're connected to. And when you're ready to start your business, you could be like, excuse me, do you think you can connect me for with a meeting with these venture capitalists so that sure. they might fund my project? When you go to Manhattan Community College... You don't have those same man, connections. Man, man, man. See, you went way down. <laughs> man, 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 I ain't say all that. I ain't say community college, Andrew. I mean, you, what the fuck, man? I didn't say go from Ivy League to you know a bodega with some books right, in it. But I, think, <laughs> I, I think that's what's going to happen. Is the top is going to still be worthwhile, and the bottom's going to be worthwhile because it doesn't cost. But the that middle much. is the middle useless. Is dead. Good it's point. Dead. And, Good point. You know, well, I, I want to revitalize it. I want, especially with the HBCUs, I think that we should start putting more money in our HBCUs. And I got something coming uh, next month that I'm going to announce. Okay. Yeah, salute to South Carolina State. Can't wait till y'all homecoming. Got an announcement. I got an announcement for y'all uh, homecoming weekend, South Carolina State, because I'll be down there that weekend. But yeah, I, I don't. I can't believe you don't want. I, I look forward. Like I would love though. I look forward. I mean, two things I've looked forward to. I would love to. for my kids to go to one of those schools. Yeah, but I'm saying I, I look forward to knowing my child is not going to have no student loan debt. Sure. Like, go do your thing wherever you want to go. But I think when I grew up, it, at least in my personal situation, it was just kind of always accepted. Like I was going to go to college. I was going to try to get into the best one. But no matter what happened, yeah, I was going to go to a college. And you know, my parents. 
The college that I went to probably cost $75,000 a year right now. What What is that? Vassar College. At, at the time when I went, it was like 20, 25. I'm sure it's close to 75. Dude, that's insane. 75, I just can't. You know, Four years ain't bad, though. 500 no, a, grand. A year. Is it 75, 75 a, year? a year? A year. Oh, got a you, year. got you, got you, got you. And I got two kids. So you're looking at a million. No way. Cash. I, so Vassar what, can't be Chris? 75, Chris. You, you oh, I'm sure it is. I really? still owe $80,000. You still owe 80000 well, so what? Charlamagne wants to tell you something today. Charlotte, say it. No, I don't. <laughs> if you don't have, if you, if you, if my, my, my thing is this: if you haven't figured out what it is that you want to do, or you don't have another skill set. Yeah, yeah. Look, if if, if you don't have a skill, set, like if, Andrew, you got a skill set. Right, I got a right. skill set. If you don't have another skill set that can make you some money, right? Take your ass to college. No, no, but no, I disagree. I disagree. I think. If my kids want to be a lawyer or an engineer or a doctor, something that requires a very specific type of degree to practice, mm -hmm. then yes, they need to go to college okay. and get that. What about so, entrepreneurship? Yeah, yeah. So what, they, what, they, what if they want to learn business? Wait, 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 wait. Listen, wait. It, it used to Chris, be, Chris, 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 this, yeah. is, this is very important to acknowledge. Still yeah. the fastest way to increase your status in American society and most societies is education. In that's 2019. undeniable. In 2019. In 2019. I think that's going to shift. And that's fair, but yeah. currently- the fastest way yes. to go from lower class to middle class in the world is education. And historically, that's been the case. But And it still is. For example, if you go to school, you get a you get an engineering degree. Sure. You will go from lower class to upper middle class the second that you get out of school. Okay. So we can't say let me, don't let me, go let, to college. Let me, let me frame it yeah. slightly differently. I'm talking about don't people. Don't study dance in college. Yeah, thank you. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, yeah. People like yeah. me who had a vague sense. I wanted to be <laughs> that's, in media. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. wanted to be a writer. Right, right. I Those are things that don't exactly require that's a, education. That's a luxury that right. you literally but can't afford If anymore. you're literally just trying to scape yourself out of poverty yeah. like so many people use college for, it sure. is incredibly valuable and those people often have a specific thing that they're trying to get. It's privileged folks that go to like your kids who might go to school going, I'm going to study poetry. And let me try to figure it out. Let me figure, or like me, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try psychology or something like that. Let me try to figure it out. That is the waste of money because we're not climbing out of something. No. But the poor people climbing out of shit and they end up being dentists or they end up doing these so type of things. Yeah, yeah. You change the trajectory of your family. Absolutely. Goddamn Lulu. Yeah. But, Damn, Taylor, you really coming through with the topics, yo. Taylor set that one up. Taylor ain't set that one up. Oh yeah, that was Felicity Huffman. Oh shit, Taylor! Taylor, you really killing it. And we did the Kim K C B D shit. God damn, Taylor. Taylor, wow. What else you got? I hate you. I mean, life, the life I don't care about the life gen. Yeah, shit. life gen is what we could pass. I didn't even first of all, I didn't even know that was Life Jennings song. I saw I didn't. I saw Amanda Seals post a video and I thought her reactions to the song was funny. And I literally was like, this song is the most horrible song I ever heard in my life. I was like, this is, I was like, this shit is terrible. And I had no idea it was life. So I posted it and I put Yo, whoever, I said, songs like this, let me know people don't have friends. And he, life got on Instagram and was like, yo, you yo, you, you, you don't support my positive music and me singing about sex. Bro, I don't care if you sing about sex. You can, yeah. Why would I give a fuck if you sing about sex? You can yeah. sing about sex all you want. All I'm saying is, the song was horrible. And Life Jennings, <laughs> your, Life Jennings is great. Life Jennings has been great forever. Life Jennings right. got dope ass records. I didn't even think it was Life Jennings. I literally saw people saying that in my comments. Like, he sounds like Life. He sounds like Life. I was like, Life Jennings would never record no bullshit like this. <laughs> I honestly thought that in my mind. Right. So when he did, the, he did the video getting at us, I'm like, oh, oh no. No harm, no foul. Because he, he said we don't support his music. Life, you've been on The Breakfast Club a few times. Like, you right. can come on The Breakfast Club now if you want to, if you got a new project out. I don't give a fuck. Like, why, why wouldn't we not support your music? Right. All I'm simply saying is, that record was whack. Right. It had nothing to do with anything. It didn't have anything to do with you selling sex, selling negativity. I didn't care about none of that. It was just like, what the fuck is this shit? He apologized, though. Yeah, what did you apologize? That's my thing. He, you apologized, but still got mad at us. Why did you apologize, but then still got mad at us? And by the way, I'm not even, I don't even care. I see everybody saying stuff like, the song's called Beat It Like a Slave. You shouldn't make light of slavery and this and that. And that. No. I was just listening to the song, listening to shit that said like, make you hop like a frog. You, uh, you shake, make, you, make your legs shake like a wet dog. Like, life. Come on, bro. You, you, you wrote Must Be Nice, my G. Like, come on, man. Hey, you can't, like, you're, you're, you're a good, you're a great artist. Like you can't make those Hop kind of like records. a frog, shake like a wet like dog. A wet make dog. your legs shake like a wet dog. Have your yeah. pussy dripping like it just got out the shower. Do pussies drip when they come out the shower? 
I know my balls drip, but pussies don't, they not, they're not designed like that. Like, yeah, I don't know. Pussies don't drip when they come out of the shower, right? I mean, you might drip as a human. I'm still getting over this frog thing. Don't think about what it. What do you too want? Hard. You said the master thing. I didn't like that. But outside of the master, the frog thing, help me understand this. Hop like a frog. Are you hopping? I don't even remember the line. What was the last? I can't find the lyrics. I, I don't know. All I'm simply saying is, life, if you're listening, uh, I had no problem. I didn't care. If, I didn't care for the content of the music. Yeah. And I just thought it was a terrible song. Like, I didn't... It's not yeah. that deep. I didn't think you was being negative. I don't care if you sing. Why would I care if you sing about sex? Like, but frogs thing. is just odd. To it bring, was just like, what they Yo, it was so bad that I, it, I would never have thought... I, I not once did I think, oh, this is really Life Jennings. I literally said to myself, who is this doing this bad Life Jennings impersonation? I literally thought that in my mind. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. Life, salute to you. God bless you. Wish you the best. He even said something at the end. He was like, and Charlamagne, you better, uh, how dare you speak on me with your charges? I don't have no charges. Right. And if I did, what the fuck that got to do with your song not being good? Right, let me see. <laughs> That's a false equivalency. Got your ass hopping like a frog. <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. Let me I, read it. I, I, okay. Let me see. Yeah, go through all this. But... Got, got your ass hopping like a frog. What, got what, your legs shaking like two wet dogs. This ain't the part we fall in love. This is the part we kiss and fuck. Do all the things we said we'd ever do. I'm going to beat it like a slave, so don't you run away. Can we go back? Can we go back? Can we go back? <laughs> got the whips and Can chains. we go back? Can we go back? Call Before me we master. Get there. Can, okay, hopping like a frog. I just need to understand what that means. Like, is that you have sex with a girl so well that she's like, she just starts bouncing around. I don't understand what... <laughs> What that pussy dripping like you just got out the shower? Okay, that makes sense. Dripping pussies, I get it. You made the pussy wet. Oh, what? Yeah, How yeah, are you yeah, yeah. fucking a girl and then she starts hopping around like a that frog? That wouldn't scare the shit out of you. I would be <laughs> if a girl just started going rip it and just bouncing. Rip it. She just snatches a mosquito out the sky with her tongue, dude. You know how what frightening that would be. I would talk about riding. I got you hopping like a frog, but. Frogs ribbit, don't ribbit, bounce ribbit, up and ribbit, down. Ribbit, Wait, ribbit, yeah. ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Frog, no, they don't. They jump forward. Um, they leap. They yeah, leap. Yeah, they don't bounce repeatedly. So hopping like a frog would imply that he, she wants to get away from him. <laughs> she's trying to leave. Got your legs The dick is so like bad, she's hopping dogs. off the dick. Now, let's go now. I got your legs shaking like two wet dogs. And by the way, this That's make, eight total legs. By the way. How many legs do you need for your metaphor? That line makes perfect sense. Shaking like two wet dogs. But it's not sexy. When two wet dogs, if a dog walked in here right now and shook, everybody would be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? You yeah, don't want to get hit by that yeah, shit. Yeah, like, it's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. there's nothing sexy about that. Isn't that what you say white people smell like or wet dogs? Huh? <laughs> I guess you, huh? But, but you have dogs' legs already. Maybe dogs' legs shake already, but I I understand what you're saying. So the legs are shaking. That kind of makes sense. It's just, This ain't the part we fall in sexy. love. Cool. This is the part we kiss and fuck. Cool. Do Great. all the things we said we'd never do, but then you go, I'm going to beat it like a slave. So don't you run away. Got the whips and chains. Call me master. I'm going to beat it like a slave. Work you every day. <laughs> do everything I say. I'm your master. <laughs> I'm just like not gonna lie, I kinda like that part. <laughs> <laughs> he says this is his latest and final album. Eh? Okay. I, mean, I can see why. I'm just saying, life, you know what I'm saying? But once again, I don't have a problem with the record other than it's just not a good record. That's it. You I, and I'm, I'm I sure, gotta listen to it first. I gotta I listen to the album. To yeah, I I'm sure listen. you got some shit on 777. Cause life can sing. Yeah. But that's just not a record. So I, you know, whatever. I need I need to hear from women. Have there ever been a, a moment where you felt like hopping during sex? Like, <laughs> I just need to understand that. I, I'm really I'm trying to understand that. Bouncing, like the only thing. I if you said bouncing like a ball, I would get it. Yeah, hopping like a frog. No. You want to show us? Yeah, show us. Show us what you're okay, talking. Okay, well now make, make some sense. Life show might be on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, Taylor. You, you come could on. really revive. Taylor, like, go, come go, on. Go, 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 Let's go, see. Go. Yeah, yeah. You might be on to something. I'll apologize to life if you show me how the fuck you <laughs> hop like a frog. If you're on, if you're riding the guy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And instead of using your knees and you're on, this is this like this type of frog. Yeah. Like, ribbit. Like, ribbit. Can ribbit. you say ribbit when you do it? <laughs> say ribbit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> okay. All right, I get it, but I still don't agree. Because uh, frogs hop off. Yeah, they go away. A frog does not hop in place. Now, it's back in my day, I'm going to be honest with animal. you. Back in my day, I did used to make girls hop like a frog. Because they used to try to do that position Taylor used to do. Yeah. And my dick's so big. Oh. Boom. 
all the way across the room on the ass. You know what I'm saying? I'm lying. Just made that whole shit up. My dick ain't, I ain't got that kind of dick at all. Okay. I'm lying. Listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you Yo, think you we're really brilliant. you really jumped high there. I'm not going to lie. You were hopping like a frog right there, son. Shout Yo, out to life. Life might be on Life, you might be hey, on life, something, Our bro. bad life. Our bad life. My, my bad, yeah. You right. You know what, life? My fault. Yo, we, I ain't we didn't never, get it. Yeah, I, ain't, I, don't, I don't got the kind of dick you got to make these girls hop like frogs. My fault, bro. All right? Big dick life out here. <laughs> as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent you think we're brilliant you're absolutely right if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit you're right too it's the brilliant idiots podcast thank you for listening thanks oh guys by the way this podcast has been brought to you by none other than warning this product contains nicotine nicotine is an addictive chemical not sale for minors satisfying yet simple no fuss for filling liquids just choose from a range of flavors while you can pop in a liquid pod and my blue goes with you all day find my blue in a store near you order online myblue.com website restricted to 21 and over